Hello again, race fans, and welcome to H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Racing. This weekend, it is the 2023 Lake Guntersville Hydrofest, the race for the Southern Cup. My name is Brad Luce, and along with Jeff Ayler, we are here at the start finish line on what is a gorgeous Lake Guntersville here on a Friday afternoon. We are about ready to open up the race course and have race boats on the water. It is a test session only, Jeff Ayler. We're going to have boats out here from two until five. There seems to be some question with regards to one of our buoys here in the start finish line, but either way, looking at Tana set sheet over here, we've got no less than six boats in the water right now, so we're going to have some action quick. I know you're ready. I'm ready, Brad. Brad, good afternoon. Great being with you. You better yet, great seeing you here in Guntersville. What a class act last night at the brand new street party. All of our boat participants were on display at City Harbor, a new thing here in Guntersville about a year in inception. And I give it a grade A. I give it two thumbs up. And as I said earlier, and I said last night, some people were talking to me and they were asking me about the event last night. And I said, what I really like is Katie Norton is not afraid to try something new. Uh, we've done different things here as far as meet and greet with the race teams and the, and the, the community here. And last night, I think that was, that was a home run. That one got knocked out of the park. The boats were all lined up on that street. There were vendors there. There was lots of people, lots of kids getting their pictures taken with the drivers. I enjoyed it. Lots of fun. Great to see the folks of Guntersville down at City. City Harbor taking a look at the boats with uh, H1 Unlimited, Grand Prix America, and Pro Light. That are the three classes making up our racing activity here this weekend in Guntersville, Alabama. Brad, we've been here before, you and I. This is the third time we've worked this event together. Same course and mileage. Hockey green flag, U11 coming at you. Twist in the makeup of how it's laid out. It is. Uh, for the first time here, the unlimited course, our Lake Guntersville GP course, and that one's definitely different as well, but it also, we're going to talk about the Lake Guntersville certified race course, both for Grand Prix America and H1 Unlimited. Explain what that means, because we might see some real world records here. Well, the short course for Grand Prix America is pro line, defended by Go Lithia, but it's a mile and one quarter race for the Brad. <laughs> Got out here at Lake Guntersville, and the drivers with those large turns should be able to keep the power up, and Brad, with that power in both turns, that boat can still hover above the water, a little bit better riding attitude. They think that's going to be the key to set records here at Guntersville, these big turns where the drivers can keep mashing the gas. Well, I wish I had a monitor on your heart, young man, because I think the last time you saw an H1 Unlimited hydroplane run was in September down on San Diego's Mission Bay. Look across the course. You're going to get your first look for 2023 at one of our members of our H1 Unlimited fleet. In fact, we got two boats coming away. First boat up the backstretch, the U11, the Legend Yacht Transport, driven by Jamie Nielsen out of Gig Harbor, Washington. Good to have boats on the water. Let's go racing. This is going to be fun, Jeff. Looking forward to it, Brad. And uh, you were able to see these two boats at the Tri-Cities test the first Friday in June. And I was very impressed with the Legend Yacht Transport. Had a speed of 155 miles per hour in testing on that two and one half mile track on the Columbia River and what is labeled now Hydrotown. Hydrotown, absolutely. So here comes Jamie Nielsen. And for our fans who follow the sport, they may have picked this up online. It's going to be tough to pick it up right now as the boat comes across start finish line. But this is a different hull than Scott and Shannon Rainey campaigned last year. This is a different boat. It's the one that between Scott and Shannon, Shannon calls this one her boat. She's partial to that one. So that's her boat. The other one they call Scott's boat. The U-40 bucket list racing with Dustin Eccles goes across start finish line. Both boats going very slowly. Exactly what I think we would expect, Jeff Ayler. They've never been on this course before. It's been moved a little bit. They better go around once slow and find out where the buoys are. Warming up the Lycoming turbine engine. And Brad, I believe up in turn number two, that looks like the Turbinator. It's early on. I hope my eyes are in focus here for 2023. So during this testing session, we'll have up to three 
H1 unlimited hydroplanes at one time, and my first miscue of the year will be the Beacon Electric. So, uh, hey, they're the both sun bright. Me already. They're both bright red, and that's one of our changes this year. Gone is the silver hulls of the U8 and the U9 Strong Racing coming across start finish line right now. The U8 with J. Michael Kelly. This boat received an awful lot of attention in the off season. I think most of the focus, Jeff online when you went to strong racing and on facebook and and read various posts i think you could get lulled into thinking that most of the emphasis was put on the rebuild of the u9 but this u8 received an awful lot of work and i can tell you in the tri-cities a few weeks ago at the test session they were extremely happy this boat turning a lap north of 162 miles an hour right i put my secondary watch on jamie nielsen and legend yacht transport Running at a leisurely pace off turn number two, the start finish line buoy. My view going at about an 85 mile per hour clip, and Brad, he gets there in 18 seconds, and now he hits the throttle. You can hear the whistle, the Lycoming turbine engine pickup, as Dustin Elkos goes by the start finish line buoy in the bucket list racing. And Brad, you saw it in Tri Cities during testing. Dustin had a lap of what, over 159 miles per hour. This is a capable young driver, capable boat. And he really likes his chances on this race course. When I was talking to him about the fact that this race course this year versus last year is the fact that the course is shorter and a little bit wider, he looked at me and smiled and says, we've got a good big course setup for this boat. He goes, I'm anxious to get it on the water and see what it will do. J. Michael Kelly off the top end of the race course is Jamie Nielsen with a little bit more authority enters the top end of the race course. Dustin Eccles halfway up the back chute still finding his way around. Now Kelly starts to air out the aid a little bit. J. Michael Kelly in that bright red Beacon Electric Jeff Ayler. And yes, if it looks like the Budweiser, they matched the tints and hues and they got the color codes for the Budweiser. And that's what it is. seconds so ideal timing marks on this new track compared to last year here at Lake Guntersville. Jamie Nielsen running smartly through the lower corner. He's going to come up the back stretch. He's going to encounter J. Michael Kelly in the U8, the Beacon Electric. Bill Cahill in the Pacific Northwest stepping up big time here for 2023, sponsoring both boats from the Strong Racing Stables, the U8, the Beacon Electric, and the U9, the Beacon Plumbing with Corey Peabody. Now, Dustin Eccles decides to put the foot down a little bit. In the U40, bucket list racing, that beautiful looking hydroplane heads down to the bottom end of the race course. Kelly floats the eight across the start finish line, the Beacon Electric. thing we didn't get to see in the Tri-Cities, Jeff, that we thought we were going to get to see was they actually had the sanction for the test session read that we could run multiple boats out on the water at the same time. It never happened. So this is the first time we've got some more than one boat on the water. And Brad, too, with three boats out here, this will give the water a little bit of that ripple effect where you can break the hydroplane up above the water. You saw the Beacon Electric in person in Tri-Cities, first time I've seen it in 2023. And right now, by my eye, you can see significant changes to this boat from 2022 to 23. The boat is up working well. J. Michael Kelly now, believe it or not, at age 44, capable shooter. Uh, you, you talk to that race team, and clearly they were not happy with their performance a year ago. They being J. Michael Kelly in the U8, boat ran last year as the Miss Tri Cities until the accident in Madison to the U9. But they were not happy with the performance of the boat. They still scored a victory on Lake Washington in Seattle. And we're going to have to talk about that at some point this weekend. Jeff, we'll get into discussing the race coming up in Seattle the first week of August. It will be the APBA Gold Cup. J. Michael Kelly, he's pretty happy about having that race on his home waters in the Seattle area. And Brad, we have Dustin Eccles dead in the water just past turn number one here on Lake Guntersville. I just see him between the tree line from our vantage point to our right. And now he's got some smoke coming out the uh, rear end of the craft. Here on Lake Guntersville is the traffic on the uh, 
Bridge Causeway slows and watches the 40. And Brad, we got some significant white smoke coming out of the 40. Keep an eye on it down there. Now it seems to be dissipating a little bit. As J. Michael Kelly gets word, that's what's going on down there in the corner. Smoke seems to be dissipating. Hopefully nothing. And now it has cleared. Both J. Michael Kelly and Jamie Nielsen get the get the word, and both boats have slowed down. Looks like Mike will head back to the pit area. I suspect Jamie Nielsen will do the same. So we certainly hope right now that everything is okay in the 40 bucket list racing. And Jamie says, no, I'm not going to go in yet. I'm not done. Now I got the course to myself. I'll stay out here and run another one. Boy, but what improvement I saw here, Brad. First time I've seen the 11 here in 23, and you can tell this boat is set up perfectly. Scott and Shannon Rainey and that team have done their homework over the winter to bring this uh, original 1993 two-wing T-plus hull back into form here 30 years later. Is that amazing? That is amazing. I mean, the boat's been completely rebuilt a couple of times, most recently in 2017, following a devastating crash in Doha, Qatar. But the big rebuild on this boat was back in 2009. So, yes, if you remember boat races back around that time and remember that two-wing T-plus and Steve David, this doesn't look anything like it. But Jamie Nielsen comes off the top end of the race course come down and put another lap in the books. We've got a fast lap so far for Jamie Nielsen in the U11. Looks like a quick one there, just a tick under 154 at 1539. The U40, Dustin Echols, top 160 before losing power at the bottom end of the race course. And J. Michael Kelly with a 159.5 as we're beginning now to get some of the speeds coming across. Dustin still nestled dead in the water just outside turn number one here on Lake Guntersville. And uh, Brad Jamie Nielsen, not only a fabulous uh, H1 Unlimited <laughs> hydroplane pilot, but uh, a financial analyst with the U.S. Navy there in Bremerton, Washington, lives in Gig Harbor, and of course your research uh, all-American shortstop, Division II at Central Washington, a one-time draftee of the Kansas City Royals. And from your sheets you brought, I did not realize he played shortstop. That's a pretty good spot on the diamond. That's a good spot. He's got a good glove. That's, a, that's an important spot. And, yes, he did play one year of professional baseball in the minor league system for those Kansas City Royals. But since he was a young child, he and his dad had raced hydroplanes and outboards, and he wanted to continue it. That's what he wanted to do. That's where his heart was. And Jamie Nielsen comes across start finish. With another lap of the U11, the legend yacht transport. Boy, you're right, Brad. Jamie's father, Jim Nielsen. Boy, what the gentleman. Quite a man. Super gentleman. He's standing just over to our left on the other side of the tower here. And Jamie's going to take it back to the pit area. Tana Morissette to my right, telling us that. The U91, the Goodman Real Estate, is about to head out on the race course. I think that'll be the next boat we see. Jeff, I know you've seen this boat on the trailer. You've seen this boat with pictures and so forth on the web. You haven't seen this boat on the water, but it's got a new, we'll call it a new paint scheme. The colors are the same. It's still black and gold and white, but boy, does it look different. A lot more white, a lot less black, and Got that Andrew Tate kid behind the wheel. He knows how to get around a race course. Oh, he sure does. Uh, Andrew from Canton, Michigan, and the paint job designed by our friend, Fast Eddie Canfush. And I like the dominant white with the gold, and Andrew Tate leaving the pit dock right now in the second entry for Miss Madison Racing here at Lake Countersville. It's the Miss Goodman Real Estate. Andrew, I mentioned from Canton, Michigan, and. Brad, I never imagined being a native of Madison, Indiana, that I would see two Miss Madison racing halls run consistently the past two seasons on the H1 Unlimited Circuit. Miss Madison racing started in 1961, two years before I was around. Well, that then there's a long time ago. 
and they have been That's very, all. very successful, certainly much more so over the last 20 years. But you're right, now there are two halls with the Miss Madison Racing banner. We thought we were going to have the 91 up next. The 91, I think, is away from the dock, but up the backstretch and entering the upper end of the of the track and the corner up there is the U9. The Beacon Plumbing with Corey Peabody. Now here's a big story, and we saw the boat run in Tri-Cities, but Jeff Ayler, the last time you saw this boat, it just didn't end quite so very good. We had a remarkable Indiana Governor's Cup last year, the final heat at Madison, Indiana. Brad, you were there with me and Jimmy Shane in the home street and Corey Peabody and then the U9 Lynx Healthcare. Now Beacon Plumbing this year it was a remarkable final heat. Entering turn number one, the final lap, the Lynx Healthcare caught some rollers and Corey Peabody was in a blower accident. Fortunately, Corey was fine, but Brad, that boat was practically destroyed. Jeff Campbell, the master technician on the Strong Racing Team. This boat's practically brand new. It's back out in 2023, and this one is a definite player here on Lake Guntersville because this hull is your defending APBA Gold Cup champion on this water. Yeah, right here on this water, we saw that a year ago. What a great event that was for Corey Peabody. You're right, it is basically a brand new boat. Corey knows how to handle it. And I, in talking with some of the members of that team, Jeff, I think there was a thought that they probably could have had that boat back on the water in San Diego, but they didn't want to. They had some things they wanted to do to the boat. It is an old hull, and there were some things they maybe wanted to do to the boat that they thought they could do and make it quicker. And they thought, well, the boat was in more than one piece. They thought, let's do it now. Let's bite the bullet. We'll take the year off. This is the result. It's at the top end of the race course. You mentioned Jeff Campbell standing right down at the end of the table from us here watching his boat very very closely i thought they made the right decision why rush why run so here comes Corey. he's going to come wide off the top end of the race course water conditions are very good jeff they've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of a chop here as dylan runny comes across start finish line here here's another big story for the 2023 season that jimmy shane guy is gone Jimmy Shane retired at the end of the season to spend more time with his family. And Dylan Runney, who put on one of the great shows in last year's Hydrofest here in the pro light class, coming back to nip Bobby King at the wire by, I don't even want to know how much, but it was like a couple feet. And it was, it was quite the event. Next thing we knew, Dylan Runney took some laps in the U91 Goodman Real Estate in San Diego and then got announced as the driver for the U1, the Miss Home Street. Fans, if you don't know this guy, you're going to get to know him and you're going to like him. What a remarkable young gentleman, successful in life and business, and a remarkable hydroplane pilot. Brad, you mentioned that pro light final here last year. He won it by 10 feet over his friend and teammate, Bobby King. Bobby is back this year in pro light, but Dylan Runney will be a rookie to begin his career here in H1 Unlimited. And Brad, with that, the first two heats Dylan enters, he'll have to start back into the outside, but after that, he can get up and fight for lanes and be with the rest in the third section. And hopefully, for Miss Madison Racing, that team would have enough boat points to go into the finals. Yeah, he's gonna kind of run this race, as you just said, a little bit with his hand behind his back. Here comes Corey Peabody down the front straightaway, boat running rather smartly, but here comes Dylan Runny, found the pedal in the one from his home street and he's gonna pull up alongside Corey Peabody as they get down to the bottom end of the race course. To getting ready to go racing here, Mr. Ayler. This is gonna be fun. Looking down there, Peabody's gonna come off the cor corner first, but they're gonna look up and see Andrew Tate driving the 91, the Goodman Real Estate. He's coming off the corner very slowly. Corey's gonna go by him and on the outside, he's gonna bring Dylan Runny with him. So you got three of them up the back chute. Tate to the inside, Peabody powers out now here comes running to his outside so a little bit of simulated h1 unlimited action even though it's testing here on the back shoot as they enter turn number two and brad it is a new look two and a half mile course for from my vantage point here visually for me it looks pretty much the same it does and i know they've really widened this race course they had like 1200 foot wide corners here in previous years and now they're up to 2,000 feet so there's 1600 feet that have been taken off of these uh these straightaways and there's a couple of h1 limited hydroplane 
side by side as Runny flies the one. And Brad, also too, this wind condition has picked up here in about yeah. the past five minutes. It's coming from the pit area over toward us at start finish, and we're seeing some unusual boat rides here on the front straightaway. The back straightaway boat rides look a little bit. Oh, and boy, the Goodman Real Estate. Andrew Tate flying by the start finish line buoy, walking from side to side. Watch Dylan up the back stretch. He's going to pull up alongside Corey again. He's trying to close it down. Corey Peabody driving the Beacon Plumbing, the U9 on the inside. And if he looks out his right side window, he is going to see Dylan Runney in the Miss Home Street. Top end of the race course. These two guys are virtually side by side. Watch Dylan Runney on the outside. He'll go way wide here. Actually, he tightens it up quite a bit, but still gives Corey plenty of room coming off the top end. Corey Peabody on the inside, Dylan Runney on the outside, getting a good feel for this race course and some of these water conditions. A much better boat ride this time down the front straightaway for Dylan Runney. Dylan Runney, Jeff Ayler may be a rookie, but I'll tell you what, this kid can drive. We know he can drive, and that boat we know is fast. Andrew Tate comes across the start finish line. He's really riding in the slop that's being left behind by Corey Peabody and Dylan Runney. Now up the back stretch, the Beacon Plumbing out by a couple of rooster tails over the Miss Home Street, but both drivers have pulled their foot. It's gonna be a slower run now. The fast boat on the race course is the U91. That is Andrew Tate driving a Goodman Real Estate. Well, Brad, we're live on H1 Unlimited through YouTube and uh... Got a couple of friends watching and listening. Uh, Debbie Meir, hello from Guntersville, and Mike Worthmeyer. He said, great to hear you and Brad again, Jeff, uh, on the shores of Lake Guntersville. Mike's a big fan, and uh, he loves boat racing. And we know Debbie is <laughs> as well, so hello to them. Wish you were here. Debbie, hope you're feeling well. We miss you. We're watching hydroplanes, and it is a good day in Guntersville, Alabama, as Andrew Tate just rockets down to the lower end of the race course. Our other two drivers have pulled their foot, but that time by Andrew Tate found the pedal, Jeff Ayler. He was moving, and now we're seeing the difference in this race course. It's tough to see it, I think, in the straightaways, as you and I were talking, Jeff, but these corners are definitely wider. It takes them quite a while. I'm thinking these boats are headed back to the pit area, but no, they're just actually going through this, as you like to say, the big left-hand sweeper, well, and, there's, we, and there's two of them here. We have two <laughs> massive turns here at Lake Guntersville watching the Facebook Live promotion with David and Katie Norton prior to the event. 2,094 feet are these turns. When the hydroplanes go to Madison, Indiana next week, we're looking at about 650-foot turns as we're in this testing session that will last until 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time here in Guntersville. And Brad, I've been a little bit concerned with this uh, wind condition, but right now the drivers seem to be handling handling things in fine fashion. And uh, another shout out, I want to say hi to our friend Ginger Jackson. She's up in the windy city of Chicago. Ginger, get down to Alabama. You got plenty of time might calm these winds at Lake Guntersville. Absolutely. Hello, Ginge. How you doing? Yes, we miss you. Come on down. Come join us somewhere along the way on the circuit this year. We've got our three boats out on the race course, and you and I were both in the pit area this morning, Jeff, and interesting conversations up and down pit row, but it seemed like every team had the same discussion. They all had an idea what they thought they wanted to do gearbox wise for this new race course, but they also all had a couple, two or three of them ready to go. They're trying to find a combination here that will work on this new race course. And I'll tell you what, Andrew Tate's running real smooth. He was really lifting the front end on that first lap, but he has settled it down and he's running really strong. And Brad, you and I know any hydroplane driver, unlimited inboard class that can fly a hydroplane, it is Andrew Tate. He has the genes for it through his father, Mark Tate. He could fly that Winston Eagle, Camel Power, and Smoking Joe's back in the day. And Andrew's mom, Sandy Tate, was quite a driver too in the old 145 class. Grandpa Joe was no slouch either. I called a heat he won. <laughs> really? Up in Michigan at Quake on the Lake, he was 70 and won a GNH heat. There Joe you go, Tate. right there. Now there's there's some lineage right there. <laughs> Good stuff. 
But Andrew's looking good, keeping it snug to the pins. Oh, he flies it off turn number two. Coming by the start finish line, Bowie and Brad, you're right. I like the paint job last year of the Goodman Real Estate, but this white and gold, it's pretty. It looks really good, and that's such a successful race boat, Jeff. As you know, this is the third winningest haul of all time. And when I'm talking about that haul, I'm talking about that U91, the Goodman Real Estate. It has been so successful. It's won four APBA Gold Cups, eight National High Points Championships, and it's only two wins behind the winningest hull in the history of H1 Unlimited Racing. You and I were talking before we came on the air. We kind of like his odds of going after the national championship this year, and if he picks off a couple of wins, that could be the winningest hull of all time in our sport. This hull has been so amazing. Debuted in uh, 2007 with Steve David in the cockpit, the Alberto with the uh, shark teeth on the canopy as Andrew comes by the start finish line buoy and Brad, as you like to say, starting to pull his foot. He will cool off this Lycoming turbine engine as he goes back into the pit area. His teammate Dylan running in front of him, Dylan slow on power, will return to the pit area as well. And Brad, we got several listeners, friends with us here on H1 Unlimited through YouTube. Hello to Valerie Ritz up in Michigan, her husband, Chris Ritz, watching the action here live on YouTube with H1 Unlimited at the Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest. And we thank our fans for dialing us up here and listening. We'll try and keep you up to date to what's going on since we opened the course. It's been kind of fun. We've had some activity on the water. We are having a little bit of an issue right now with our radios and getting speeds accurately delivered to you and I here, Jeff. So as soon as we can catch up on those, we'll pass them along. But some of them, at least if they are correct or partially correct, look pretty good. I see a lot of high 150s. And we had Eccles in there at a 160 plus. Echoes. They had that problem. But I think all the boats look good that I've seen so far out here, Brad. So that's a good sign. The big prize here is the Southern Cup, and that will be conducted at 5.30 Central Daylight Time on Sunday here in Guntersville, and do I hear a roll? I think you do. Uh, Turbocharged Allison, <laughs> the Terminator. I think that's a boat you know pretty good, and you know what, Jeff? I I like that Terminator here this weekend. That boat is fast, and when they get it wound up on a big, wide race course, they can get in some people's way, and they can cause some troubles. These guys, are they're going to be a player. And Brad, you have a relative uh, listening and watching, uh, Andrew Luce. I think you know that guy. <laughs> Hello there, young man. Thanks for dialing us up. I wish you were here. Uh, yeah, that's my son. He's back in the Northwest. Uh, glad he's watching. He'll be joining us over in the Tri-Cities in a few weeks, Mr. Ayler. So I've told that that is a lot of Tennessee orange up the back stretch, and that's going to be a big story because this is going to be Brent Hall is going to come out in the U440 bucket list racing Boitano Homes. My apologies, I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. I heard him too, and I know he pulled away. We could see him, and any I think he shut down. I don't know whether the U3 went back to the back to the pit area or not. But Brent Hall, this is a rookie driver. I am so happy for oh. Brent. What an opportunity here in the Boitano Homes 440. Brad, this is a capable driver, and he should qualify as an unlimited chauffeur, and uh, this is a guy who can get it done. You know, I've got family members here that help out on the H1 production here, and they always say that I, my comment is always, oh, he's such a good guy. This is such a good guy. You'll like this driver. He's a good guy. This guy, this is one of the sweetest people you will ever meet on the planet. Brent Hall is something special. This is not his first time in an H1 Unlimited hydroplane. He has been out before. He test drove the U9 for Mike and Lori Jones. So he has done this before, but he is a rookie. He's gonna have to turn 15 laps on this race course, 10 of which are gonna have to be north of 130 miles an hour. Brent told me this morning and at the Tri-Cities test session where unfortunately they were unable to get off the trailer, he told me, he said, Brad, don't be surprised if we don't come out and turn a couple laps about 80, 85, 90, and then just go back to the pit area. The problem they've had has been that gearbox. And if they can make that gearbox work, we know this boat is capable. Jeff, I watched this boat turn a lap north of 150 miles an hour on the old race course here, and this course is supposed to be quicker. 
Brent working up in turn number two, the Boitano Homes U440, known as bucket list racing for many years, but Brent Hall coming by the start finish line buoy. Brent will turn 54 years of age on July 2nd, lives in Botha, Washington, and Brad, he's sharp not only in the cockpit, but holds a business management degree from the University of Phoenix, and uh, it shows, and Brent could be a good public relations spokesman, too. Uh, he's well diverse. Absolutely. He is a director of operations for Primera Blue Cross, the healthcare company based out of the Pacific Northwest. 129. <laughs> 129.09 <laughs> and change. It doesn't make any difference. It's a tick under 1.3, and that's where he's got to get to 1.30. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you, but I just want everything to go so well for Brent here. We need to get 15 laps all at over 130 under the watchful eyes of the H1 Unlimited officials. And Brad here in 2019, I believe you saw Dustin Eccles do a lap here of over 150 in this particular crash. I did. I did. I did. It was something special. This one's quicker. Brent's got Brent's to put his first one down north of a buck 30 this time. And I'm basing that on nothing but hope and I'm rooting for the kid. This is one of my favorite people in the H1 Unlimited family. This would be a huge accomplishment for Brent if he can come out and put seven or eight laps down. Like we said, oh, that one, how about that one, four, two? Uh -huh. Yeah, that one definitely looked quicker. I spoke to Brent this morning, Brad, and he thought these bigger 2,094 foot turns would help him to keep the boat up yeah. above the water, keep the speed up. Yeah, and you talk to Dustin Eccles, who spent so much time in the cockpit of this boat, and he says, I'll tell you what, he goes, this boat gets off the corner quick. He said it really accelerates, and he said on some level, he said, I think it accelerates faster than the 40. But he said it just doesn't maintain the top end speed, and of course, he's, he, it's a smaller boat, so the water conditions can play havoc with it. He runs a smaller turbine, not near as much horsepower in this one as they do in the other H1 Unlimited turbine hydroplanes. He's a little bit slower, I think, on this lap, Jeff. In fact, he's definitely going to be slower. We'll get his speed. The first one at 129, the next one at 142. Again, 15 laps are required, 10 of which have got to be north of that 130 mile an hour mark. Waiting to get the number here, and he's, oh, he's got another 129. Ugh, he's close. But like you said, those count, but they we count. do need the 10 over a buck 30, as you would say. I think that is an extremely successful yes. run. He is gonna take the boat back across the causeway and take it back to the pit area. 15's the magic number, three up, three down, one of them over 130 miles an hour, but well over 130 miles an hour at 142.238. We can't see it from here, but I know darn well there's a big smile on that young man's face. Oh yeah, Brent was so instrumental last night at the street party. Brad, he had the simulator. Our kids could come up and take a crack at driving a, a hydroplane with the simulator, and the Brent was signing autographs, and they had a long line there at the 440 yep. bucket list racing. And uh, Brent's words this morning to me, the simulator, he goes, Jeff, we got a couple ringers in there. They were good. <laughs> I talked to one young man. He was excited to give it a try, and I saw him a couple of minutes later. I said, how'd it go? He goes, I blew it over twice. <laughs> it's easy to do on that thing. It's very easy to do. I did talk to Brent about the simulator, and I think he thought I was kidding at first, but then I said, you do realize I'm not kidding. I said, how do we get you up to my house and set this up down on the lounge downstairs and fire this thing up? He said, we could make it happen. Brent Hall, driver of the 440 bucket list racing Boitano Homes. Planes in the pit area for the season opener here at Lake Guntersville. So we've seen the one, the eight, the nine, the 11, the 40, the 91, the 440, 
We're waiting on the World War II aircraft engine. Turbocharged Allison Griggs presents Miss Ace Hardware with Jimmy King, the oldest engine in the field, the oldest driver in the field here this weekend, but a very capable driver, Jimmy King, at age 62 now from Wales, Michigan. And uh, Brad, I echo your comments earlier. This Turbinator, 3,500 horsepower turbocharged Allison, lane one, could play a factor. We'll see how it plays out. And now I believe he's starting to get her cranked up. Yeah, I think we're going to step in your wheelhouse here, Jeff. We've got some Grand Prix America boats okay. coming away from the pit area over there. I believe that's what I'm being told. We'll see. New course for those boats as well. We've talked a little bit about both courses. Both courses are certified. And we've been talking about some of the speeds, Jeff, that we saw in our H1 Unlimiteds. We've seen a lap at 160 miles an hour. We've seen a lap at 159. Uh, so certainly the high 150s and 160 is in play to give people an idea or an example of what it would take to set a record on a two and a half mile race course. A two and a half mile qualifying record. It's a number that's been hanging out there for a long, long time. I don't know if this one's gonna go down for a while, but the fastest qualifying lap ever turned on a two and a half mile course. Dave Vilwalk and Miss Budweiser, San Diego in 1999. Get this, Jeff Ayler, I know you know the number. 173, yep, that was a seven. 173.384 miles per hour. Fastest competition lap, two and a half miles, 166. Jeff Ayler, that was in Honolulu. I saw that lap. You were there. I that was year. there. Awesome. I was back at home uh, listening to the Jim Hendrick Unlimited Radio <laughs> Network on Works 96.7 FM, WRX. And uh, on the course right now, Brad, we have the Grand Prix America Hydroplanes. This is the second largest class on the planet. Hydroplane racing. These boats are 24 foot in length, 12 foot width, all powered by the 468 cubic inch big block engine. Supercharged, racing trim around 2,700 pounds. These boats uh, generate around 1,400 horsepower. Straightaway speeds, are, they are well capable of getting up to 170, but in competition like here, that at Lake Guntersville with this new one and one quarter mile track. Shoot speeds at the end of each shoot, Brad, I'm looking at about a buck 30, maybe up to the 140 mark, but the key is with the larger turns, similar to what we were talking about Fred Hall earlier, keeping your foot to the floorboard and making that hull hover above the water, get a better boat ride in each corner. And the Grand Prix America Boats thinks that's the key, not only to victory here this weekend, but to also, too, possibly setting a course record on a mile and a quarter course here at Lake Guntersville. And Brad, very similar look to our right, the bridge, the causeway, like the Milton Madison Bridge in Madison. When boats are on the water, the traffic snarls. Yeah, that happens on Highway 395 in the Tri-Cities on the Blue Bridge as well. It's funny how that works though, Jeff Baylor. Everybody loves these boats. They do draw a lot of attention and you just have to keep your eyes on the lane and the vehicle in front of you. You want to watch them? Come on down. Brandon Kennedy going back to the pit dock in the brand new TKO 35 Racing. River City Printing is the sponsor here this weekend in Guntersville and next weekend in Madison. That is a Madison, Indiana area business owned by Kyle Bimes as Brandon Kennedy goes back into the pit dock. Brandon out of Newark, Delaware. Next boat out, Dominant Orange with the checkered flag effect on both sponsors. That is the GP79 Reliable Diamond Tool. Jonathan Thompson's business out of Arizona. Now the sponsor for Mike Grindell. This is your two-time defending National High Point champion in Grand Prix America, the GP79 Reliable Diamond Tool. Jeff Bernard, the chauffeur out of Kent, Washington. 
crew chief is Uncle Mike Weber out of Michigan. And Brad, we've seen this boat run many times the past two years in GPA. This one is one to watch. Oh yeah, and Jeff is an extremely capable driver. Been driving this boat for a few years. You mentioned Jonathan Thompson, reliable diamond tool. He's standing just down to our left. I had a chance to speak with him before we got on the water. One thing that's going to be really interesting, Jeff, when our Grand Prix America hydroplanes go racing, they hit that start finish line, and that next buoy is the entrance pin to the corner. So Bernard working up the back straightaway on this new layout here at Lake Gunnersville for the Grand Prix American drivers. It's still a mile and a quarter, but the turns are bigger. The straightaways are a lot shorter in distance. Bernard off turn number two. Get a timing mark there at full speed off the exit pin of turn number two to the start finish line. Ran at full throttle off turn two to the start finish line. Five plus seconds. That's moving. Bernard, we mentioned two time defending Grand Prix America champion, the National High Point standings. Owner Mike Grindell out of Webster, Massachusetts. Mike Grindell loves Grand Prix America hydroplane racing, and Mike gets really excited when he sees this boat on the <laughs> water. And now Jeff Slow's coming off uh, turn number two. And Brad, not only we mentioned for the H1 pilots getting their feet wet, so to say, on the new layout, it's important too for the GPA drivers and from Mike Chauffeur. Absolutely. So this is this is all new. We've got another of our Grand Prix boats coming across the lake here. It's a long way across to our pit area, but just a dynamite layout using one of your favorite adjectives there, Jeff. This is just a super race course. I know the first two years I was down here, I kept telling it, Jeff, you got to get down here and see this. This is something special, and it really is a terrific venue. I've been blessed to go to many races, Brad, and blessed to work many, but for Jeff Ayler, the two dumbest things I ever did in my life was not come here in 2018 and 2019. Penalty, penalty, penalty. There you go. Yeah, you're still doing penalty laps for that, you know. And I feel it. And it's not like you missed anything. That final heat in 2018 wasn't all that good. That was one of the best. That was the best heat I ever saw. Ever. <laughs> that was a that was a blistering final heat. I was on the pipes by myself. I didn't have anybody to, to get all excited with, but man, oh man, Andrew Tate and Jimmy Shane, that was something special. And I remember telling the fans after the race, I said, man, this is your first race here, the first time any of you, many of you have seen Unlimited Hydro. They don't all end like that. <laughs> I remember when you said that, Brad, and that was very fitting. And great at the time when you did that, but that was a spectacular final between uh, Andrew Tate and the Delta Real Track and Jimmy Shane in the Miss Home Street. Now we have Bobby King on the track out of Shelby Township, Michigan, driving for Mike Mabinski, new partner with Huey Newport. This boat this weekend, it's the Jack's Bar and Grill, presents Sunbelt Rentals. Piper Wings, Hydrofish, spin it out. Yeah, if he's got that many sponsors on there, he better get way out front, as I like to say. Bobby King getting his first crack here in the GP88. For you hydroplane fans that know the sport well, this is the former GP777 Steeler. Mike Mabinski now on board with Huey Newport, as I mentioned, and Bobby King getting his feet wet here in the Jack's Bar and Grill presents Sunbelt Rentals. Piper Wings Hydrofish as he works through turn number two, and boy, Brad, Bobby King has a hum to that 468. Looks good. Coming across start finish line, and now working into turn number one. And there's that burp and that cough of the Grand Prix that the fans like along the shoreline as King works through. 
turn number one. King will be busy this weekend. He'll double up in the Pro Light Hydroplane Series presented by Go Lithium. He will be in Roger Mahan's 242 LDC construction. But Brad, your view right now with the GPAs on this course, you can tell visually here from our angle, you can they're keeping the speeds up in the turns. Well, they definitely are. They are big, big corners. They're not as wide as the unlimited corner, so their backstretch is actually inside the backstretch for the unlimited, but they're still really wide. I'm glad you brought it up because when I saw the diagram <laughs> from the surveyors on this, usually the inboard course, it uses the back straightaway for the unlimited. I don't think I've worked an event at unlimited where there's a different back straightaway than what they use. This is very unique here this weekend, and I like it. Yeah, it's gonna be different, and uh, that's why we're seeing the drivers come out and spend so much time, I think, on the water. I think we're gonna see a lot of them come out and test on this and find out exactly what's the setup gonna be like. Uh, they know the corners are huge, but they're talking about the unlimited. Well, these are big too. They're just not as big. It's gonna be different. I oh, wanted to say hello to my good friend out of Cambridge, Maryland, John Tommy. John. He messaged me, Brad, and he said, it looks like the GP course they run at Waterford, Jeff. And uh, John, I kind of got to agree with you, but that one there in Waterford, I believe, was one mile. You called many races there. I called many races there, but this one's a mile and a quarter. And John, glad you're here with us, uh, watching via H1 Unlimited through YouTube. And uh, Brad, John will be busy next week. He's going to Brockville, Ontario, Canada Ooh. for that event. and then. John will have the honors to help announce at Valleyfield, Quebec, Canada. How about that? Neat stuff. I've never done that Valleyfield thing. I have yet to do that. That is on my bucket list. I've got to go to Valleyfield and see the racing. You know how many racing. times he's asked me to go, and I said, can't do and it And you've right never yet. done it? No, nope, I've never done it. Wow. I've never done it. That is on my bucket list, too. You and I had a heck of an invitation a couple of years ago in Detroit. We were talking to our favorite, uh, Martine Rachon, or AKA Rock On. They wanted you and I to come up. We were going to be honorary crew members. That would have been, somehow I think that would have been a fun weekend. Rock On. He still got that on his boat. Oh, he does. He does. That Jeff. is his signature now. Rock On. And the story on that, Brad and I met Martine Rochon at the. Uh, 2019 uh, Detroit Metro Detroit Chevy Dealers Hydro Fest when they ran the inboard event this year and Brad go up with our pencil and papers and notes and uh, he brought it up he goes I'm rock on he was serious <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's just say my broadcast partner here didn't take a whole lot of French and uh, he was having a little trouble with that Martin Rochon See, and rolling those R's, and it became rock on, and man, did it stick. You did good. Awesome. Already getting blistered by my buddy in Maryland. <laughs> you better get to Valley Field. And yeah, Waterford was one mile, he said. There we go. There we go. You know, just to close on that Bobby King that was just out here, there's been a lot of conversation around the H1 Unlimiteds and, and the Grand Prix America. You know, what kind of talent? We've got Dylan Runney up here, and Andrew Tate has come back, and there's been all this discussion about what's the next big talent to maybe step up from Grand Prix America and come step aboard the big boat. That Bobby King, his name keeps bubbling up to the top. It does, but I will share this with you. Lots of fans in Madison asked me the same question, Brad, and I'm gonna try my best to hold my word to it. I'm gonna try to continue to do this, Lord willing, but I wanna see Brandon or Bobby Kennedy get a crack at H1 Unlimited. They're ready. Ab absolutely they are. Absolutely they are. So there's a lot of talent back there. It's, you know, it's like Brent Hall says, you know, there's nine H1 Unlimited drivers. There, there's only nine seats and he's got one. And uh, they, they don't come easily, but there's a lot of talent out there ready to make a step up. I tell you what, Brad, great hearing from our friends. Uh, Cal Phipps, you guys have to do Valley Field. Best racing ever, professionally run, great <laughs> town, best fans ever. Well said. There you go. That's Calvin? That's Calvin. All right. Hello, Cal. Haven't seen him for a long time. Glad to hear from him. 
Boy, there's a great driver. Calvin. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Boy, he can fly, but. Reuben Bobby. Reuben Bobby. There's our guy. Yep. Jeff, it's quiet on our race course right now. I think we're going to mute the microphones here for a few minutes and step away, stretch our legs as soon as we get a boat back out on the water here in Lake Guntersville. Jeff and I'll come back on and talk about what's going on, review some of our speeds that we saw on the unlimited side. It is the 2023 Lake Guntersville Hydro Fest, the race for the Southern Cup. Jeff Ayler, Brad Luce, you're watching the H1 Unlimited live stream. We'll be back as soon as we've got more action on the water. For our fans around the world, thank you for watching H1 Unlimited via YouTube. We're here at the 2023 Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest in Lake Guntersville, Alabama, located in Northeast Alabama. Coming up on three o'clock Central Daylight Time here in Alabama, we'll have the water until 5 p.m. for testing with H1 Unlimited. Grand Prix America Hydroplanes and the Pro Light Hydroplane Series presented by Go Lithium. Back to testing on the water. Seven of our eight H1 Unlimited to take into the water. Now we go back to Grand Prix America Hydroplane testing. And this is the fourth boat to take to the one and one quarter mile race course here this weekend. The dominant yellow craft, the former Alamo. 
now owned by Greg and Jerry Hop. Jerry from Snohomish, Washington. Greg in the cockpit out of Lake Stevens, Washington, working through turn number two. GP15 Stetner Construction Group. That is their sponsor for the Northwest this year. And leaving the name on board for this weekend's Guntersville Lake Hydrofest. Stetner Construction Group with Greg Hopp. The team also receives assistance from Bardall Plan B Garage and the Guntersville Foodland Plus. Grand Prix America Hydroplanes will trek north next weekend to Madison, Indiana for the Madison Regatta presented by U.S. Premier Tube Mills. And this particular craft will run under the local sponsor Super Shine Auto Detailing and Window Tinting. Next weekend, the Madison Regatta with assistance from Dan Cole sells cars. Greg Hobb looking good in turn number one here in the Grand Prix number 15, Stetner Construction Group. Greg has a win under his belt in the Grand Prix America Series back in 2021 out in Mission Bay in San Diego, California. Greg made a couple of laps around the track and now we'll head back into the pit area in the GP15 Stetner Construction Group. Five boats entered this weekend in Grand Prix America. Four of our five have taken to the water. Still waiting for an appearance from Richards Racing's GP17 Miss Renee. Dustin Eccles will pilot out of Monroe, Washington. And yes, Dustin will do double duty this weekend in the GP17 Miss Renee, and in the H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Series in the U40 Bucket List Racing. With Greg Hopp going back into the pit area, we'll take a slight break here with our audio with H1 Unlimited through YouTube, but keep with us, stand by. We have two more hours of water activity, testing only here at Lake Guntersville. Stand by.
as Dustin Eccles came out quickly and will go back into the pit dock in the GP17, Miss Renee. This craft did compete in the testing session out in Tri-Cities, Washington the first Friday in June. Video I saw, boat looked real good. Let's hope this little issue they had is not severe as Justin, or Dustin, I'm sorry, will go back into the pit dock under his own power in the Miss Renee. Brad Luce, you're rejoining me. We're coming up on three bells, two more bells to go, and bells means hours, two more hours of testing here, day number one of three of the 2023 Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest and Ted Grange with Grand Prix America is right, Brad. There is hospitality, <laughs> but you cannot beat Guntersville hospitality. It is off the charts. They keep climbing the mountain. They're going into space. Yeah, it, they've, they take it to a new level, and we say that every year. And if you've been here, you understand exactly what we're talking about. If you have not been here and you are a boat race fan, I guess it's like you and I in Valley Field. What, what are you doing? You need to get down here because this is very cool. When you stepped away for a moment, uh, this uh, device, and these are handy things that I started using 2020. The, we're, we're getting a lot of invites. <laughs> we win. We, there you go, Jeff. <laughs> we're going to have you. Hobbling Francois, how about that? So I think on the unlimited side and that which you have in your hand, we're gonna talk about here in a little bit when we get a couple of boats out of here from your hometown of Madison, Indiana. But I think we've seen all of the H1 boats on the water with the exception of the Turbinator. I suspect we will see them. You're not gonna see them a whole lot. Um, Jimmy King put it so perfectly to me one day on the dock in the Tri-Cities. I said, you came out, you ran one hot lap, you brought the boat back to the pit area, and I said, how come you came back? And he said, there's only so many laps in that old Allison engine. Use them wisely. That's instructions from the top. Absolutely. It's instructions from the guy who's got to build those things. But they will be out. I expect we'll see them here maybe in our next group when they come out on the water. I also expect we're going to see all of the boats we saw, all of the turbine boats, I think they will come back out as well. As I mentioned earlier, this is all about finding the right gear combination, propeller combination, etc., etc., on this new course. And this is all new. It's the same lake, but we might as well be on a different river somewhere first time out because that's a whole new course. I agree with you, Brad. I think we'll see all the turbine boats back out. And also, too, it's very important to get as much testing time today because the qualifying window tomorrow is from 8 to 10 a.m. And, Brad, that is very important because where you position yourself on the qualifying ladder, that starts the national high point standings for 2023. It does, and we had the unfortunate news come this past week that we've lost uh, our race in San Diego on the unlimited side, so we're down to only four events. So you better get your points while you have an opportunity. Well, you need to score quick. You need to score early. And Brad, my good friend from a 96.7 FM WRX, Tim Torrance. Tim will be here this weekend. And Tim has echoed for years and years, and I agree with him, Brad. The most important heat of the weekend for your points is that first heat. You have to score well and score high if you don't you're already behind the eight ball. Yeah, and you're chasing your tail. And I would doubt she is listening to our live broadcast, but how many times did we have a conversation about the wonderful Debbie Gregory of oh. USA Racing Partners and what she used to always say. She just walked through the pit area. She'd say points, 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 points. You can't win it unless you're in it. And by that, that we mean you've got to get in that final heat. You've got to score points. And to your point, if you have a tough first heat, you're chasing your tail the rest of the day. So we got some pro lights coming out on the race course here. I think we've got three of them coming, Jeff. We're being told boat number 40, boat number 55, and boat number 80. And I don't know if you saw it, Jeff, but I know you remember it from last year. They pit on the other side of the causeway. And you get to a point where you can kind of hear them coming, but you can't see them. And all of a sudden, they come underneath that, that bridge over there. <laughs> it's a pretty dramatic sight. Brad, it is neat. Only hydroplane race I've ever worked on the PA or radio where I brought boats out through the no wake zone. There you go. That is true. That is true. Pro Light Hydroplanes presented by Go Lithium. 
These boats are 20 foot in length, 10 foot width, all powered by a stock 350 cubic inch engine. Seeing around 400 horsepower, racing trim at 1,500 pounds. Boat speed in the chute, Brad, these boats are capable of up to 130. I think here in competition on these short chutes at the end of each straightaway, probably about a 110, 115, and uh, got a group of six here this weekend. And one that is back and so glad to be back is the E40 E-Rat E Rat Racing, pardon me. Dylan Goodell is the owner and driver at, out of Allen Park, Michigan. And Brad, last year at San Diego, we saw this boat in a frightening blowover accident with Mike Horvath in the cockpit. Mike was uninjured, but this boat went through an extensive rebuild through the off season. And uh, Dylan is back out here and he just wants to take baby steps, but this is not Dylan. That first boat in turn number one, that is the hold on loosely driven by Rob Petke out of Ortonville, Michigan. The owners are his mom and dad, Mike and Monica Petke out of Oxford, Michigan. Brad, that first boat in turn number one, the team manager of that team, Mark Weber. There you go. I did not know why our friend Mr. Weber was standing down there when I took a walk, when I took that break, but he was standing down there and I didn't know the US, the Miss US was coming out. It was not. Now you've just answered that question. I saw the team earlier. I got some inside information. I won't give the RPMs. He said, go out and put it at this uh, RPM level. We'll get some timing runs. Take a cruise. There you go. When you talked about Dylan Goodell coming out here, Again, new race course. I think he lost the upper corner when he went through it the first time. He was way up here on the race course. He's got it now. He knows where he is. Brad, this second boat out here, this is an interesting craft. This is a boat built, started back in 1992. Began its campaign in 1995, and unfortunately, it's going dead in the water. It's a Steidegger hull campaign by Jay Brennan out of Lake Hapakong, New Jersey. The driver will be rookie Kyle Johnson out of Jackson, Georgia. Kyle just completed his training in the APBA inboard school boat up in Springfield, Ohio. This will be his first week race this weekend, but unfortunately they have problems with that 350. And Brad, the first big inboard race I've worked out of town was in Kent Island, Maryland. The late Mark Johnson was in this boat racing side by side with Scott Blackwell out of Indianapolis and in the old My Way boat run by the Webbers and they put on a fabulous show for the fans at Kent Island. This is an older boat, but Jay Brennan, with very minimal funding, he can make one go. So let's see if I can get this problem solved and let's hope it's not too serious. Absolutely. So the hold on loosely, Rob Betke into turn number one. This boat, Brad, you will remember it. Indian Cave Resorts, I believe. Marty Clack out of Louisiana was the owner. Jeff Bernard built it. You've seen this boat run at Pateras and Spanaway a few times. And uh, this is a very capable hull. They've got a local sponsor at next weekend's Madison Regatta. Jack Mano Families, Northside Liquors will be on board. I know Jackie the daughter that runs the business, brother Steve, and uh, the Mano family and Knoble families, they're looking forward to seeing this boat run next weekend in Madison as Northside Liquors. Well, it certainly looks good out here on the water right now, and fans will remember this particular class last year. And if they don't, a quick reminder of, if you saw a rerun of the final heat, you, you would remember it real quick. What a show they put on. And that was Dylan running with a come from behind victory. It was a great one. These guys kind of stole the show last year. Oh, it was a splendid final heat here last year. King led the majority of it, but boy, Ronnie, right at the last moment, you would have thought he'd had the nitrous oxide, but he <laughs> had the Javier Castellano mage whip on it, come from behind and got it at the end. There you go, and that's what he did. He and I were talking about that back in the Tri-Cities at the test session a little bit. Brad, the, this will be our third time we've worked here together. Don't hope I don't jinx it, but this is about the most wind I've seen here on this water when the boats are running. So it does give a little bit different twist to it. It will, and it can get tricky. Um, I will say that that final heat in 
2018, it was rougher than this. And I remember asking Jimmy Shane once, so how's the water? And he goes, it's, it's, it's there. And I said, is it raceable? And he goes, eh, kinda. <laughs> it was rough. And then they went out and ran the final. <laughs> I've watched the video on that one numerous times and you had a wonderful call on it, Brad, that 2018 Southern Cup. And 2019, we had the break, unfortunately, in 20, but we came back here in 2021, and uh, I thought we had a wonderful day of racing that weekend here after the uh, pandemic. And uh, boy, J. Michael Kelly in the final heat was a rocket in the U8 Miss Tri-Cities winning the 21 Southern Cup. And then, of course, his teammate, Corey Peabody, won last year's version, but it was the APBA Gold Cup here in the Lynx Healthcare. Yeah, that was certainly a big win for Corey and for Strong Racing, but you just touched on something there that's kind of one of the stories this weekend. This is the fifth time that the Unlimiteds have run on Lake Guntersville since their return in 2018. And Jeff, we've had four previous races and four winners. So we might just find our, our fifth winner here and keep that string going. Well, it could happen, very well could happen, and I wouldn't be surprised if it did happen as Rob Betke continues on the track, and now he cuts through the infield, so might have lost the course there. I hope nothing went yeah. wrong inside. Now Rob is yeah. shutting it down, the hold on loosely. So Brad, the Betke family, his father Mike, and of course Rob are well known with the remote control hydroplane racing. I believe the reason he shut down is because we have a safety and rescue boat going to the number 80 craft Geronimo with the uh, rookie Kyle Johnson in the cockpit so Brad looks like we might have a slight delay but no we have one more coming underneath the causeway to come on to the one and one quarter mile race course here at Lake Guntersville yeah this is the tough place to break down for our smaller class here because it's a long way back to their pit area. You talked about them coming out from underneath the bridge there on the causeway. They have to get towed back underneath that. That's a long way to go. They may not be home for dinner. <laughs> well, we had a good meal last night down at the uh, City Harbor. Everything was uh, A1 first class. I enjoyed it. Next boat out is a pro light as soon as it gets closer to us here at the uh, start finish line. We'll give you an ID. Look like they might have lost the course as they're working deep up in turn number two. Now I believe they've refound it, so they'll come down through turn number two. We do have the 80 Geronimo of Kyle Johnson on the hook and uh, Rob Betke still dead in the water. And Brad, by my visual eye here without the binoculars, it looks like Rob. Yeah. is coming out of the enclosed capsule in the E55 hold on loosely. So let's hope there's not a big problem with these two pro light boats to begin their weekend here in testing only at the Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest. This is the I boat. I gotta know, I got an idea. I know that boat, not to step on you, but I think I know that one. This is winner here last year with Dylan running in the cockpit. It's yeah. Roger Mahan's pleasure seekers, but Brad in the cockpit is a rookie John Woldarski. John is out of Newton, New Jersey, but John is very familiar with racing on the water. He's a two-time inductee in the APBA Hall of Champions in outboard racing. Numerous championships in outboard. He has experience as a radio man with Dylan Runney in this particular craft here in HRL and also too in Pro Light. This is a boat you need to watch this weekend let alone with the rookie cockpit underneath the capsule. John Boldarski out of Newton, New Jersey. I think he'll take to it in fine fashion. 
Well, if he had a little problem navigating the course the first time around, he is certainly, nope. well, now I'm going to change that. Nope. I was about to say he's got it figured out, and I think he just cut the exit nope. pin off here. So he's he's coming down the middle of the corner. He's going to miss the start finish line Bowie just went by him on the wrong side oh now he's going to run down to this is going to take some getting used to for these guys because yeah he's well Brad it's the you every hydroplane driver has to have a great sense of direction because these buoys when you're out there it's really a camouflage effect they blend right into the water and the uh, scenery in the background I would love to tell you, Jeff, that that's the reason I don't drive an unlimited hydroplane or one of these boats is because it really is a problem for me being colorblind. But honest to goodness, I cannot see the color of these buoys. I would be lost. And then you put two courses out there and throw some insurance buoys into the mix. I would, I would, I would be lost. You're, you're so remarkable, and that is true. Brad is colorblind, and <laughs> you just do a fabulous job and. It's very unique how you describe, how you dictate what colors come out through your eyes. It's a very <laughs> unique when you explain it. I don't think we're going to too in depth in it here. But I don't see how you do it. I have a hard enough time doing it and I can tell you the colors. Well, when we first got here, we were talking about the entrance pin to the lower corner for H1. And you and Tana were here talking, yes, that well, right after the green one, it's the yellow one, the big one, the yellow one. I had to point it out with landmarks. It's the big one. <laughs> <laughs> so, pro lights on the water, 316 on my watch, Central Daylight Time here at Lake Guntersville. Got another friend of ours watching, Brad through H1 Unlimited via YouTube. Who's your Bill Jones and his wife watching the testing activity? Said he loves listening to you and I, and he gives them a crack them up. A crack them up. spell it like I do. No. You gotta get her extended out there, Bill. And I'm sure he doesn't say it quite the way <laughs> you do. You, you've got that one figured out. Thank you, Bill, and hope you're enjoying the activity have a lot of good friends that sending us messages so far here this weekend, Brad, and uh, looking forward to not only the remainder today, but boy, the big days are Saturday and Sunday. That's when it gets uh, white knuckle time. Yeah, it certainly does, and it's going to be good. Um, there's been so much talk, and I'm speaking to the H1 side of the ledger here, but there's been so much talk over the last few years about boat count, and we have. We've struggled with boat count on, on a certain level. And we still don't have a boat count back up to where we'd like it to be, but I will tell you what, and yes, we've said this over and over again, I don't know that I can ever remember the amount of parity that I've seen in an H1 Unlimited fleet as we have across the lake from us here in Lake Guntersville. Very good parity, and Brad, what I like, all the team super sharp this year. Every boat, nice paint jobs, good clean look, professional look. Of course, a strong racing now with the uh, sponsorship of Bill Cahill with the Beacon Plumbing and the Beacon Electric and of course a Miss Madison Racing with their two sponsors. Uh, Home Street with uh, Mark Mason, John Goodman with Goodman Real Estate and uh, that Tennessee Orange Bucket List Racing, that is one I'm surprised does not have a name on it yet, but Brad, once they find one, they found them a wonderful camp. Absolutely, and that team, Jeff, they are I spent a lot of time in the pit area during that day at the test session, and I talked to the race teams before we went out on the water. I talked to the drivers and so forth afterward. It wasn't even close. There is not a team that appears, at least outwardly, to have anywhere near the amount of as much fun as they do in that bucket list racing group. They are their smiles around that group when they're happy they work hard but when they're happy they're smiling they're having a good time together i really really like that race team and it's a team well and i was speaking to kelly yesterday evening brad at the uh, street party and uh, just thank the world of kelly he goes back so far in hydroplane oh. racing not only with unlimited but an inboard but you've spoken to kelly many times and the reason that boat is u40 
is because Kelly wants to emulate his unlimited hydroplane team like Dixon Smith did with Miss Bardall back in the day. Yep, that's a famous number in unlimited hydroplane racing, of course, as you say, with Dixon Smith. Uh, the Miss Bardall, the Green Dragon, comes to mind. As a kid growing up, Jeff Ayler, that was my favorite hydroplane. This, the third one, the 1962 Hall, that one, I just loved it. And another friend of Mars uh, listening and watching, good friend of mine, that was his favorite boat too, Milton, Kentucky Mayor Denny Jackson. There you his go. favorite boat was the Green Dragon Bardall. Green. Ron Musson was actually Denny's hero. Really? Yeah. yeah. And David Lee up in Indianapolis watching, listening. David, hello, good afternoon, and uh, hope you're enjoying the coverage with H1 Unlimited through YouTube. And, Brad, I was telling uh, Kelly a story last night. My late father, uh, he was a good mechanic, and uh, Sonny Adler in Madison had a Sinclair gas station there on Madison's Hilltop, and I hope Sonny's daughter is watching and listening, Letitia Wilson, but uh, Sonny became great friends with Leo Vandenberg, really? former crew chief of the Miss Bardall, and when the Miss Bardall came into town under Leo's leadership, where did it end up? Sinclair Gas Station of Sunny Adler's on Madison's Hilltop. <laughs> you always come with a piece of trivia somewhere, Jeff, and you've already popped it, <laughs> thrown it on the table. That's a good one. Boy, but Leo stuck with the sport for a long time. He was a crew member on the uh, Squire Shop with Kelly Stockland. Kelly Stockland. Yes, sir. That is one thing about this sport that is, and many sports are that way, we're not unique in this fashion, but we do have a very, very rich and colorful past. Um, the history is well documented. And so much of us, <laughs> those of us of a certain vintage that remember certain of those boats, um, you know, I'm gonna tell this story now, you know I have a lot of photos hanging on the wall Oh. Uh, down in my Gold Cup Lounge. My favorite one down there is a, it's one of those, back in the day, they used to have the giant postcards. You know, they had the little postcards, mm. but then they had the big ones. Well, I got one of my favorite boat, the Miss Bardall, and I was 10 years old, and I was waiting in the pit area to get an autograph from Ron Musson. Oh, my. And I'll bet you I waited an hour and a half, just leaning over the fence, leaning over the fence, waiting. And I finally got his attention, or he got mine, I don't remember. And he walked over to me and he started talking to me. And I said, can I please have your autograph? That's my favorite picture on the wall. That is a great story, Brad. And uh, I knew, never knew Ron Musson, never met Ron Musson, but just heard nothing but wonderful things about Ron representing a bar doll. Of course, they filmed the uh, Camel Cigarette commercial yes, in they Madison, did. Indiana with the Miss Bardall. Ron Musson was the driver. I believe that was in the fall of uh, 1962 there on the <laughs> Ohio River. And another friend listening, they're on the road. They're not watching us, they're listening to us. Our friend of Cisco, Illinois, Sean Bowser with Nikki. Hey. They're traveling to the Thrill in the Ville at Belleville, Michigan this weekend with the Knockout Grind. Yeah, about that. Hey, guys, <laughs> keep your eyes on the road. We'll keep our eyes on the water. We're having a good time. <laughs> and they, boy, Sean's got a great new uh, paint job on that boat. Absolutely. The, that beautiful uh, fluorescent green and uh, good sponsorship with that one liter Y52 knockout grind. We saw Sean last year at uh, San Diego and uh, he loves the sport, loves the race and better yet, good guy. So John Boldarski went back to the pit area while Brad and I was reminiscing about various subjects and in board unlimited hydroplane racing. I think we've got an unlimited hydroplane coming out who we got? I don't know, but I think I can narrow it down to one of two. Okay. I think we can narrow it down to either the U8, the Beacon Electric, or the U9, the Beacon Plumbing. There you go. I'm just taking a shot. It has nothing to do with the fact that Jeff Campbell's sitting right behind you on your left. <laughs> but I'm thinking if he found his way over here, chances are one of those two boats I is going to come out. I think that's a good choice. And, uh, also, too, want to say hello to uh, Josh Myers up in Madison. Uh, 
He does a lot of things at 95.3 WIKI. Josh, good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, I know you'll be busy next weekend at the 2023 Madison Regatta presented by U.S. Premier Tube Mills. Brad, you'll be back in Madison next weekend. Looking forward to it. And uh, but we still got business here to take care of here at Lake Guntersville for the Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest. And yeah, Brad, you're right. Eight and nine. Looks like they'll be next on the water from Strong Racing, sponsored by Bill Cahill with Beacon Plumbing. Great to see the new addition in the business, Beacon Electric, out here on the H1 Unlimited Series. Absolutely, and Bill Cahill has been a big supporter of hydroplane racing for a long time. I think our next boat on the water may be the U11 Legend Yacht Transport. Tana Morissette here monitoring the radio and writing down information for you and I. Jeff Ayler, Tana asked me a long time ago, what's my job? And I said, make Jeff and I look good. Now that's a full-time job. <laughs> I told both Tana and Mike earlier before we went on the air, they are such wonderful people. I'm so blessed to have them as friends. And uh, Brad, that's what this sport is all about. I have met so many outstanding people in over 40 years of doing this stuff, let alone 30 years of broadcasting. And uh, that's what makes everything the people you meet and get involved with. And you're one of the best in the business. You talk to anybody about this sport, you're the best spokesman of all. Ah, well, thank you, but uh, you're right. And it's not just the people within boat racing, as you said there just a moment ago, in anything you do, it's the people. I look back at my career and jobs I had and, and work that I did, it's the people. It's the people that always make it the best. And uh, we've sure had a lot of fun with our boat racing family. Well, now I'm going to tell you that Tana here is giving us all this information and helping us out here and doing such a great job and making you and I look good. Her daughter Amber is watching us. Amber, are you in the pool or did you get out? Because I know where she's hanging out. She's at the, the Pop Nana Resort. She's hanging by the pool. I heard that conversation this morning. She had to kind of get the uh, temperature up on that <laughs> pool, and I hope you did, Amber. And also, too, Charlie Demery's listening up in Madison, and uh, his buddies, uh, Marlene and Charlie Sargent, they'll be here later tonight, Matt. Brad, they're from Madison, and you know Marlene. She wears very colorful attire and always brings me something here at the stand at Lake Gunnersville. And that's why I'm sitting next to you. That's why I'm sitting next to you, and I'm hoping she brings two. So Amber Smith down there in uh, Edmond, Oklahoma. Thanks for dialing us up. Wish you were here. It's a beautiful sight here on Lake Guntersville. Jamie Nielsen and the U11 Legend Yacht Transport running up the back stretch came out here earlier today. Let's take a look at some of his speeds. Jamie had a fast lap out here, 153.927 on his first run. Look for him to move that up a little bit. This boat, as you said earlier, Jamie, nice right on the buoy row there. Nice corner for Jamie. He'll come down the front straightaway. You see the air going underneath the boat. That's when you're getting a good boat ride. He's solid as a rock. Jamie Nielsen out of Gig Harbor, Washington in the Legend Yacht Transport, the U11. Boat looks good, Jeff. It does, Brad. Jamie working into turn number one. These 2,094 foot turns cut out here at Lake Guntersville. And Brad, the past two seasons, Jamie knows how to get lane number one, and he's positioned there right now. Beautiful corner. And the happiest person is across the water in a pit area, 160.880 miles an hour. A good lap for Jamie Nielsen. I can't see Scott. Rainey, he's on the other side of the tower, but there's a smile. He told me when he got here, he was extremely optimistic. I think there is some smiling going on there, but he's already at the top end of the race course. Can he tick it up a little bit, Jeff? Look at his line through the corner, beautiful. Last year here and at Madison, they ran as Miss Colleen, now the sponsor, Legend Yacht Transport. Brad, you know I've said it numerous times, when you get that sponsor on there, the performance ticks up. It sure does. It sure does. The day they got that sponsor and got it announced, I got a hold of Shannon extremely quickly. We are awaiting the speed here on lap number two. It is 162.466 miles an hour, 162. How about that? Legend Yacht Transport, Jamie Nielsen, 
Beautiful. I wasn't expecting these type of speech from this team right now. The wind is laid down some 162.466 miles per hour. Brad, my handicapping has got to be recalculated. <laughs> Now, I know we got some people, one in particular, a family member of mine back in Edmond, Oklahoma. She's hearing that going 160 miles an hour. That's picking them up and laying them down. Amber, let me explain this to you. That is an average speed for the lap. Uh, that's the average speed. So straightaway speed, a bunch higher than that. So for our new fans watching, and it's actually faster than that because the two and a half miles is measured right around the top of the buoys. Obviously, they run a wider course than that. Jamie Nielsen with a timing mark here, a timing run to the start finish line. Man, that is the best I've seen that boat look in a long, and long time. Brad, you and I both know Jamie had a very successful Grand Prix career. Sure did. The late Scott Pierce won several races, and we're going to get another time here. It's a little bit slower as now you saw Jamie go away from the buoys, making some timing runs, but that is outstanding. Running a different hull this year, 162.466. With that, Brad, well, that send a little bit of message over up and down pit row with the 11 going 162. Yeah, they came to play. They definitely came claimed to play. You talk about Jamie Nielsen uh, having a good career in smaller boats. He had a great outboard career. He is a 15 time outboard national high points champion. Looks like we have the uh, turbinator being lowered into the water, Brad, as Jamie Nielsen continues on the track in the Legend Yacht Transport. I hit my secondary watch there a little bit late, coming to the start-finish line buoy. We'll get a timing run off turn number two, the start-finish line buoy. And had a pretty full charge up there. That one was at nine seconds, so... We caught one earlier from uh, J. Michael Kelly, I believe. It was 12 seconds off the exit pin of turn number two to the start and finish line buoy. Of course, H1 Unlimited, the boats run on a clock start format. And Brad, one of the things we will go over throughout the weekend, and one thing that you like, when the boats are leaving the pit dock, your lane is not assigned to you. You have no idea where you're gonna start at in your lane. That is decided in that five minute warm up period leading up to the one minute period, which is the next critical clock countdown for this series right there at one minute. That's where you need to be in that spot. You need to get in that lane and be aggressive and don't jump the gun. And as you always say, Jeff Ayler, so appropriately, it is the race before the race. You can win the race or lose the race before it even starts if you get yourself out of position. And that's what we'll be watching, year. sorry. Saw it here last year with the home. So Jamie Nielsen back to the pit dock in the Legend Yacht Transport. Owner Scott and Shannon Racing with the Unlimited Racing Group. And Dave Holly, the sponsor, I'm sure he's tickled with that. Legend Yacht Transport. Absolutely. Checking in here at testing at a little over 162 miles per hour. Quick check of the watch here. We are at 3.30, so we're Halfway through our test session here from 2 to 5. We're going to go until 5 o'clock. We've got a boat coming away from the dock. Wanted to give uh, Mike Hendrickson a shout out. Brad, he's a Jersey speed skiff racer out of Gibstown, New Jersey. I've seen Mike run many times in that 63. And you'll like this one. Brent Thacker, he's a native Madisonian. He's moved away from Madison, but he formerly worked at a place in Madison that I know real well. Bellows Pizza. 812 I couldn't recite my home phone number when I was 12 years old, but you've never forgotten that one. A good people. The bigger question. Is it good pizza? You bet you never had a bad one there. <laughs> Is this who we think it is? I think you got, sure is, sure is. I hear something. 
All right, Jeff, and we're going back a few decades here, going back to piston power. That boat sounds different. That boat looks different. It should. It's a World War II aircraft engine aboard the U-3, the Griggs Ace Hardware. And as you saw last night at the street fair, we always give a big shout out and a big thank you to Charlie Grigg of Grigg's Ace Hardware in the Tri-Cities of Washington. Charlie Grigg is here this weekend. And great to see Charlie here this weekend with uh, Ace Hardware. And what a remarkable family there in Southeast Washington, Brad, the Grigg family. Not only great business people in the Tri-Cities, but Charlie Grigg, quite the gentleman. And he is so tickled to be associated with Ed Cooper with this uh, World War II turbocharged Allison Craft. Uh, my family and I, my wife and I, we got to know Charlie quite well during the off season uh, through some events we were doing together. And as we said, just a super guy, but I got the chance to talk to him a lot about his sponsorship package and his relationship with Ed Cooper and this particular team. And it is something that's very special to him. It's very near and dear to him. Here comes Jimmy gonna put the foot down. You're gonna hear a roar of a piston power World War II H1 Unlimited hydroplane Jimmy King aboard the Griggs Ace Hardware. Looking good down the front chute, entering turn number one. Turbocharged Allison cranking out close to 3,500 horsepower. And Brad, look at that turn in turn number one, that 2,094 foot turn, no problem. No problem at all. And they can able to carry a lot of speed through that corner. That's why he's pulled his foot. And that's why they, this course is expected to be so fast Oh, don't drop it down. And it looks like he is going to drop down. He's pulling off of the race course away from us. He's making a right hand turn. Well, between the two of us, Jeff, I'm gonna take that as a really, really good sign. If there was a vibration, if there was something he felt was wrong or bad or damaging to the boat, to the motor, to the hull, I think he'd have shut it down, but he thinks he can take it back to the pit area, so. Let's hope it's nothing major. Certainly there was an artillery, if you will, of V, <laughs> of Allison engines in there. There was a lot of power aboard that, uh, Boy, that it, truck. It looked good down this front chute and it looked good through that first turn and you can see the extension of that turn. That boat looked great through the turn, hugging it to the buoys, but something happened about the halfway mark of the back chute. But the good part is Brad mentioned going back in under his own power. Ed Cooper will get with the team and let's hope the turbinator can come back out later for some testing because qualifying's coming up tomorrow morning between eight and 10. Jimmy King calls home to Wales, Michigan. Got started in H1 Unlimited's back in 1994, driving for Exide Batteries. How about that? Mike and Lori Jones, the Miss Exide. Now there's a name that goes way back before that too. In the 60s. Take that back to the 60s. Milo and Glenn Stowen owned the Miss Exide. That was one of the fastest boats Jeff Ayler I ever saw. That was the former Wahoo. Uh, Bill Brow took it out at the 1965 Gold Cup. You know I'm gonna do this. You go right ahead. <laughs> took it out at the 1965 Gold Cup. You had to run three laps. All right, what do we got here? <laughs> well, we've got a uh, question here that's come in. This is good from our fans. Jeff, the question is, and this is going to save me from saying my minutia, which nobody was going to want to hear anyway. Can you explain the difference between the U3 Allison engine that was just out here on the race course and the engines in the Thunderboats of old? Well. The quick answer is nothing. there is nothing different. Now, the two engines of choice back in the day were the Allison and the Rolls-Royce Merlin, and they were typically supercharged. But then the turbocharger came along, and what they are running in the U3 right now is the same old World War II Allison engine, but except with a turbocharger instead of a supercharger. But you know, that's a great question. It's if a you, great if you question. you really think about it, because we're seeing a boat with the throwback of the World War II aircraft engines. This boat was built in 2002. 
this has been a unique piece for two decades, and it it's has. still neat to see it run, but the primary power plant, of course, is the turbine. This is one, it's still competitive, but it gets a little cantankerous. It can get very cantankerous, and I like that U3. I like it on this course. I do too. I like I it on so. this course. It, it was fast here a year ago, and unfortunately, they had an 80 mile an hour violation that we kept that. them from making it into the final heat. And as the final heat turned out, uh, quite possibly a final heat they would have had a good shot to win now this course is shorter and wider i like it even better for the u3 i think it's right in their wheelhouse brad i totally agree and by that turn he made in turn number one just moments ago uh, that big piston boat get hooked up in lane one come that southern cup final uh, fans along the shoreline if that craft would win they might be taking a bath in lake gunnersville they'll be excited Yes, it will. So, top end of the race course, J. Michael Kelly. He knows what it takes to win on this particular race course. Coming down the front straightaway in the U8. The Beacon Electric, bright red. And as we said earlier, Jeff, uh, talking to that team after last year, they were not happy. They were not happy with their performance. They did get the win in Seattle. We're going to run that Gold Cup in Seattle, and you know, J. Michael Kelly's won on that body of water four times. He has a very good knack in negotiating that two-mile Lake Washington course, and Brad, actually, this boat last year, the problems began right here in turn number one on lap number one of the Gold Cup. They lost their best engine yep. when that turbine exploded, and now they've had the winner. Looks good right now. Yeah, there was a lot of work, as we said, done on that boat and under the watchful eye of Jeff Campbell, who is standing just to your left, Jeff, and he is keeping a close eye on a lot of work that he did in the eye. Look at that corner, another great line through there. J. Michael Kelly, these nice wide corners, these guys are not pushing it out any further than they have to. Kelly flies the right spots and across start finish line. What a great job, Brad. You spotted that. That was a beautiful back into turn number one and watch this one as he whistles the beacon electric through that big turn number one, 2,094 feet. Sorry. Boy, look at that acceleration. Yeah, and our fans might look at the boats through the corner down there and go, wow, I just don't, I remember the, the wall of, off the skid fin as being bigger and taller. And that's when the corners were a lot tighter. These things are really, really wide. What'd you say, 2,094 feet? Yep, that's had... what David Norton said in the <laughs> Facebook teleconference a couple of weeks prior to the event. And Brad, one of the concerns I had coming in, I thought maybe driver physicality might be a concern with these 20, 94 foot turns. And uh, I think it might be better. It looks like the drivers can negotiate better into the turn, through the turn, and off the turn. I know we're both anxious here to see what kind of speed we're, we're laying down, and we have not gotten it yet. We're monitoring the H1 radio. Being told they did not get a speed on lap number one. And another concern, I was worried about maybe the stress, the skid pin behind the left sponson, but I think this is fine. Oh my. Second lap, 165.116 miles an hour. Jeff, there was some talk about this course being a little quicker. I think we're there. I believe we are. <laughs> I think we are there. Katie wow. And David Norton, their staff is uh, setting fire here to Lake Gunnersville early on here. And this is only testing. Remember, the speeds will count when we go qualifying tomorrow morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time here in Northeast Alabama at the Gunnersville Lake Hydro Fest. And Brad, as you say, he's pulled his foot, but the next one, a little better. A little better, 166.066. That's picking them up and laying them down. Now, just for reference, and that's all this is. Nice job. <laughs> Jeff Campbell just looked over and said, little bits at a time. Well, that was a big chunk. But just as a point of reference, just as a point of reference, we do have speeds for the Lake Guntersville race course in the past. Now, they couldn't set records because the course was never certified, but still it was the same course every year. 
And who was the fastest person ever to go around it? Well, it turns out it was Jimmy Shane in the Miss Home Street in 2019 when in qualifying, he turned a lap at 162.422 miles an hour. Now, J. Michael Kelly, for reference, just went out and turned a lap at 166. Now, it doesn't count as a record doesn't count as a record on the course because that's got to happen during qualifying but certainly the indications are there this is a fast race course it is a fast race course and brad that speed kind of reminds me last year in san diego on sunday when jimmy shane and the miss home street what laid down was it a buck 68 on that oh. water two and a half mile course but it didn't count as a right turban restricted one lap record because it was not performed under the qualifying under session. the qualifying so and tomorrow bringing, morning that was bringing a little bit of rumblings on the uh, social media aspect but the rules are the rules it wasn't set during the qualifying session and that's when the records are placed and that's where they should be placed that's where they should be placed counts. and my apologies for stepping on you there and uh, mr no. mr campbell's gonna stay here and watch his other boat after he just looked at us and said little steps at a time so uh Man, that's got to feel pretty good. So here comes Corey Peabody, our defending Lake Guntersville champion, our defending APBA Gold Cup champion. Nice young man out of the Pacific Northwest. Since he raced here last year, Corey Peabody now works full time for Strong Racing. He is the team general manager. And he's already down to the bottom end of the race course. And there's that skid fin wall, Jeff. It's just not as high as it used to be because they're not cranking it as hard to the left. I like this so far. I think uh, Katie and David Norton's on to something here with this uh, possible record water here at Lake Guntersville as Peabody works into turn number two. You mentioned the current strong racing team general manager, of course, married to his wife, Stacy. Daughters Riley at age 20, Leighton at 12, and I always love his son's name, Race, R-A-Y-C-E. He's now in double digits at 10. Corey flying about down the front straightaway. Not as solid as Mike was, but he's got a lot of air under it. Now, Brad Luce, that's a boat ride. Pardon me? <laughs> that's a boat ride. That's a boat ride. You're dancing on the sponsons. Brad, there was some concerns about passing coming into this with these big turns. I tell you what, if you're two and three, and if you can keep it mashed, we're gonna see some triple deckers. We, we're gonna see some triple deckers, and we're gonna see some good racing. He turned that lap, Jeff, 164.317, Corey Peabody. See if he doesn't tighten up this corner a little bit. He's going out a little wider than Mike was. And here he comes, watch his boat ride. He was dancing the sponsons last time, doing it again, just tapping it left, tapping it right. Now he's solid as a rock. Corey Peabody driving a nine, the Beacon Plumbing for Daryl and Vanessa Strong. Had some fun with Daryl and Vanessa last night at the street fair. Boy, how, how nice has it been to have them come join our sport and be part of the ownership group of these two quick hydroplanes, 165. 0.684165. And that was a little off the buoy road. Yeah. If he tightens this thing up, he could pick up another mile an hour. Beautiful sight working into turn number two here at Lake Guntersville. 348. We got about an hour and ten left in testing through the turn. And Brad, these oh, 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 are the oh. fastest yeah, racing he's... boats, and it's showing it. Yeah, and he tightened that one up. Not to the point that Mike did, but he tightened it up a bit. I think this one will be quicker, walking a sponsor. Corey Peabody comes across. Wow. Making eye contact here with uh, Jeff Campbell as he watches. You know, you spend the whole off season working six, sometimes seven days a week on these boats and then having to come out and do this. That's got to feel pretty good. Uh oh. 166.787166. Where was Mike? Mike was 1660. Teammate Corey, 1667. And still has Ooh. the hammer down, working into turn number two, not slowing. This will be his fourth hot lap on the clock. The U9 missed Beacon Plumbing. 
Bill Cahill, the sponsor. We hope you're listening in the Seattle area. Both your boats are running hot. No clogs, no leaks, no errors. Yeah. Corey, set it back down. He started walking a little bit, and it was getting a little higher each time. Nice. I think that's going to do it for Corey. He's going to head back. Congratulations. I did indeed. We have like to, the oh. fastest lap in testing here. Congrats. At the Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest. This is testing only. Corey Peabody and Beacon Plumbing. Brad, deliver the news. 168.199. 168.199. Jeff, I didn't think I was going to pull it out, but I'm going to. Here it comes. I was talking to David Campbell with the Madison Courier and Tim Torrance at 96.7 FM WRX prior to this event about three weeks ago. And Brad, David has covered the sport for numerous years at the paper. He point blank looked at me and he said, Jeff, he goes, I think we'll see 170. I don't know who it is, but I think we'll see 170. He's, he's, he's right there. He's right there. They're, they're knocking at the door. So I said I was going to pull it out. There it is. It has stood there for a long, long time. Are we close? I don't know. I don't the, know if we can get that high. I don't know if we can get that high, but the world record for qualifying on any course, anywhere, by any boat, any time, Dave Vilwalk, Miss Budweiser, San Diego, 1999, 173.384. That is picking them up and laying them down. And of course, that was when it was unrestricted. No fuel flow, it's 4.3 gallons per minute currently. And, uh, but still though, back in at 173. Brad, before I got the sheets from you, going by memory, Mark Tate did a lap one time in the Winston Eagle in Detroit, I believe he was at the 172 mark. And I can't imagine that with that tight rooster tail turn and the large Belle Isle Bridge turn. That boat did 172 on the Detroit River. And of course, nothing shaped like this. No, nothing like this at all. This is at least, this is a wide course, but it's symmetrical. That one on Detroit, has got the widest turn on the unlimited circuit and it's got the tightest. And it's a crew chief's nightmare trying to set your boat up for it. I never did ask Katie and David. There's an asphalt place around here at 2.66 miles. It's got a dog leg. This one's a little bit more symmetrical. You <laughs> think they're in competition with each other? They just might very well be. You talk about that lap that uh, Mark Tate took in the Winston Eagle. When you're out there in the Gold Cup Lounge this summer, Jeff, be sure and look above my TV. There's a big old picture up there commemorating that particular run. And the painting that's on the wall commemorating that run is very incorrect because when Mark Tate ran that 172 or whatever it was, he did it without the horizontal stabilizer. They just run. decided to go out and run without it and see what happened. He <laughs> laid down a 172. Less weight, less filling. You betcha. <laughs> All right. Who we got here? We got Andrew, I believe. Andrew Tate, U91, Goodman Real Estate. And Brad, when we began testing, we had that wind. And that's tied. Yeah. And this water's a little bit better right now for the H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Pilots. As Andrew Tate works into turn number one, this will be his first race for Miss Madison Racing. He was named the 23rd driver of Miss Madison Racing back on December 22nd, the day I turned 59. I did not know that. That's a good gift. It was. You, you got a new driver. I got the paper, and there it was. Happy there it birthday. was. How about that? And I think when uh, Corey Peabody, just to go back to that last run there for the Beacon Plumbing, when Corey did his run, Jeff Campbell came over, and I know these microphones pick up the sound. I, I'm sure the fans watching online heard him say, did you like that boat ride in the eight? Yeah, I certainly did. It was solid as a rock. Andrew Tate flying. The U. 91 Goodman Real Estate. I want to talk a little bit about Madison Racing, Jeff Ayler, and I'm going to throw this one to you without talking about it. 
but uh, we just recently lost somebody in Madison that was very important to you, but it wasn't just important to you. It was important to H1 Unlimited Racing and certainly important to all of Madison, Indiana. Of course, that was Bob Hughes, and somebody just came down and dropped some pretty good commemorative buttons off to us for Bob. Yeah, Bob just passed away recently in this month of June. Actually, Brad, the uh, funeral services is this coming Wednesday in Madison. And uh, Mr. Madison, Bob Hughes, he loved Miss Madison. And uh, Bob was a native of DuPont, Brad, just about uh, 10 miles north of Madison. But Bob was charismatic, a hard worker in the tool and dive business. Brad, he made deals back in the day, starting his business with the handshake. And the business grew and grew and grew. And he started Clifty Engineering, still in business there in Madison on the hilltop. But that that one little niche, that one thing he loved was Miss Madison. He was a big man. And I know for a fact, Brad, when you talk about big figures in sports, he had a big heart too. He helped people behind the scenes in Madison that people don't realize. He did. He was, that's why I say he was so very important to not just Madison, but to the sport. As Andrew Tate put, puts it right on the Bowie Road just to keep us up to speed. Andrew's first lap here at a buck 60.7. Second lap, 162.238. Third one is in the books. Andrew Tate driving a gorgeous Goodman Real Estate, the U91. Bob Hughes, his loss will be felt across uh, boat racing for a long time. You're going to tell me, and I think you know, I do not. I don't know his age. I think I, I want to say he was possibly 87 years old. He had a great life. He was a good man. He sure was a great man and uh, will be sorely missed. And uh, Pat, his wife, Pat, we send our uh, condolences and sympathy out to you. And uh, he was Mr. Madison. Yeah, and he's up there with uh, Mrs. Madison Carroll, too. Yeah. Remember the ESPN footage with Don Poor? She had the rope and would tie the knots. She'd tie the knot. To, to count the laps. <laughs> she counted laps by tying knots in a rope. <laughs> that was good stuff. So Andrew Tate, Brad, 160, 162, 163. Tana has the Sharpie marker in hand. It is, but just by a skosh, 163, 163.713 miles an hour. You want to talk about a kid that just loves to race. This kid will race a shopping cart in a grocery store if you pull alongside him and say, let's go. <laughs> he got to know him a little bit better during the off season as well. I was having some email conversation with the drivers about certain things they like, like and all that. He's got quite a sense of humor, but he is a good one. I, for one, am extremely happy to have Andrew Tate back in our H1 family. I think they would love to get above that 165 barrier, lap number five in the books. Brad Luce will deliver the speed. Will it be faster? Will it be just right where the range was throughout the entire run? A little bit slower this time, 163.1. And he's pulled his foot. See if Andrew doesn't go up the backstretch here and play around with a little timing mark and a timing run. And it looks like if that's what he's going to do, Jeff, we should probably explain that a little bit. Our racing format, it's all done on a clock. And the idea is to put your boat right out in front of us on the start finish line, full song, open water, clean lane as fast as the thing will go and you don't dare jump the gun because that's going to cost you a penalty and you're not going to win. You're going to have to run an extra lap. So there's a lot going into this. So you have to time yourself from point A to point B. And Andrew's going to cut the race course here. And with the turbine boats after the heat, they do have to go through technical inspection with H1 Unlimited. That's another factor in the equation as well, Brad. Not only the racing on the water, but the inspection. You have to be legal if you're not. That could occur. Yeah, so Andrew cut the race course there and came across to the front straightaway. A legal maneuver, fully legal, and they can do that during the milling period, or as we were talking earlier, the race before the race. 
Looks like Andrew's going to take it back across the causeway. That was Dylan Rennie back on December 22nd. He was the 24th driver. Andrew was the 23rd named driver of Miss Madison on November 23rd. Time enough to carve the turkey. <laughs> So, Jeff, we ran, I'm going to do this from memory, and I'm going to blow it, but I think I can get really close. <laughs> Tana's going to look at me and go, I think you're right, I think you're wrong, I think you're nuts. We ran 107 laps at the test session in the Tri-Cities. She gritted her teeth and looked the other direction. I don't know if that means she can't remember or I'm way off. <laughs> It was, a, it was a, I, the two numbers sitting there are 104 and 107. It was one of the two. Seven boats ran that many laps. 18 of those laps were over 160 miles an hour. 12 of which were run by the U1, the Miss Home Street, Dylan running. But I want to run this past you. I just want to throw some numbers at you. The last three boats that have been on the water, the speeds have been 165, 166, 164, 165, 166, 168, 160, 162, 63, 63, 63. You and I have never seen that. No, nothing like that. And I like what Katie and David North did. They're trying something different. There was some concerns coming down there. Yep. But right now in our we've been in the testing session for two hours. We have one more hour to go. I think this is going to work out fine. The speeds are going to be fast, Brad, but will this incur in a little bit more ragged on the edge racing, or will it be some safe racing with these high speeds? The only thing I know for sure on that is we're going to find out. Tomorrow? And we're going to find Sunday. it out tomorrow and Sunday. And if you're not here and you're going to watch online or listen online, do not miss the final heat. And this might be that, one for the ages. It's uh, H1 Unlimited via YouTube. Uh, Ron Harson watching and listening up in Madison. Hey, Ron. Ron wrote many books with the late Fred Farley. And, boy, Ron's a historian as well in this sport. He does a great job with his uh, photography and, of course, uh, books. Absolutely. But, you know, I'm just thinking of something else after I rattle off those speeds that Tana's got here for us as we're awaiting now the arrival of Dylan Runney in the Miss Home Street. I'm going to go back to our boss this weekend here. That would be Katie Norton of the Lake Guntersville Hydro Fest. I think, Jeff, you tell me if I'm wrong, I think their slogan for this particular race course, I think it's wrong. I think they're in error. <laughs> this is the South's fastest water. It might just be the fastest water. It could be the world's <laughs> fastest, fastest water. water for H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Racing. They are the world's fastest racing boats, and this could be the world's fastest water. I'm telling you, they've got some competition in with those asphalt boats with that 2.66 mile. So let me ask you a question, Jeff, and I, I have an opinion on this answer, but I'll, I'll try and get it from you. Dylan Running, we know the home street is fast. I mean, there's no question. If you had to put a $100 bill on the table and say which boat's the quickest, that's the one you're going to put it on. Does that mean he wins? Not necessarily. He came out and turned five laps earlier. Fast lap was 144 miles an hour. Since then, we've seen 160, 160, 165, 164. Everybody's easily waltzing through that. We know this boat is capable of 160 mile an hour laps. Is there any additional pressure being felt by Dylan Runney in the cockpit right now? I'm sure there is, but those speeds were turned with two other boats on the water, and we had that heavier wind condition earlier, and he was on the outside of some boats. Now, I think we'll see the true run here of the U1 Miss Home Street in testing. Brad, you saw it the first Friday in June back in the Tri-Cities. This is a very capable pilot, Dylan Runney out of Rumson, New Jersey driving for Miss Madison Racing, the Miss Home Street. Can he get in the 160s? We're about to find out. He's on the clock. He's on the clock. He came off the corner. He was up there in a, in a bit of a cloud. He was in the shade when he got to the exit pin. Then he put his foot in it, and away he went. Dylan running. And you make a very good point, Jeff, about the fact there was other boats out on the water. I actually forgot about that.
Ooh, he pulled his foot. You heard that right when he, he, heard, he got yeah. past that first buoy and the foot came out of it. Brad, that was an unusual sound of that turbine. You could, you would, we could hear the whistling effect decrease here from our position as he's in a turn number two. Dylan running this home street. Well, Dylan comes off the top end of the race course. I want to take an opportunity here very quickly, Jeff, to have a shout out to Big Jim and AJ Kish for helping us EQ the sound from back up in Michigan. They've been helping with the sound system, hoping those of you watching and listening online are getting some good sound. Big Jim, AJ, Kish. Thanks, guys. All right, we'll see what it was, but I'm not expecting anything too spectacular given the, the way he came off the corner. Now, there's the exit pin right there. It was about right here where he seemingly pulled a foot a little bit. 155 on that one, 155. So there's his quickest lap, but I think his foot's out of it again a little bit. Yeah, maybe not. Looks like that left sponson touching the water a little bit unusual on that back shoot. I noticed, Brad, maybe two or three different times. You kind of saw that skin pin water pop up oh. a little bit, but there's a remarkable turn yeah, there off the exit that. pin of two. Look at that. Also, too, are they looking at a racing setup? Well, that's, not sheer speed? that's it. You never know what they're testing. Sorry, Brad. Nope, that thing. Just kind of puts your heart right up in your throat when they do that sometimes. Oh, they start waving that outside sponsor, and you just don't know how far, how high they're going to wave it. But he got it settled back down, runny off the corner. To your point, what you said earlier, look at the acceleration. Five miles an hour quicker on that one, Jeff Ayler. 160.791, 160.7. Flying it, got it up and dancing. Dylan running. Fans, Jeff, watching on H1 Unlimited YouTube channel, watching these boats out here one at a time. When we go racing here this weekend, they're going to come off that lower corner there four wide, <laughs> and they're going to put the foot in it like Dylan's doing right now up the back stretch. And if you've never seen it before, it is an absolutely spectacular sight. Look at him paint the buoy up there. It's quite a sight when boats come off the corner side by side and give it all they've got. With these huge turns and watching the racing here this weekend, it's going to be gigantic letters of F-U-N. It's going to be fun. It's going to be real fun. I believe he, yes, he did. Dylan Runney pulled his foot when he came across start finish. We'll get the last lap speed for him. Madison boats not as fast as the strong entries, but that's his quickest of the weekend right there. 163, 163.294. Now we'll see if we don't get a timing run here for Mr. Runny. We talked a little bit about that because our racing format is done on a clock start and he's gonna come right across the course exactly like uh, Andrew Tate did. And I paused right there when I said, like Andrew Tate did. Did you watch the interview with Andrew Tate that was done in the Tri-Cities prior to the testing session? Now that one I missed, I apologize. You're gonna have to watch that. It's very interesting because Tate and Jared Meyer, who pulled these videos together and are at the head of the live stream team here, they pull these things together and they ask the questions off camera. They edit that out and then they just, after the driver is done asking, answering the question, the screen goes black and they put 
the next question on the screen and then it goes to the driver's answer. They asked Andrew Tate to talk about Dylan Runney. Talk about Dylan Runney, your teammate Dylan Runney. That was it. Something to that effect and he explains how long he's known Dylan Runney. They were driving against each other when they were nine years old. They've known each other forever. He appreciates the fact that he can call Dylan Runney a true friend of his, etc., etc. And then he kind of pauses and he says, but I'm not sure I like the way you use the word teammate. He says, uh, yes, we're both under the, and I'm paraphrasing, yes, I'm underneath the Miss Madison Racing ownership umbrella, but he wears powder blue and I wear black and gold. And he made it pretty clear. Don't be asking me to take one for the team unless it's my team. I think it was interesting stuff. Yeah, come final heat time, teammates or not, toss that out the window. Yep. That time Dylan came off the top end of the race course about lane three. And he's pulled his foot again down at the lower end of the race course, see if he doesn't head back across the causeway. And that's what he's gonna do. Good, good sight there for all those cars coming across the causeway going, whoa, that thing's pretty cool. Say hello up Minnesota, Andy Mitchell. You know too many people, Jeff. Folks along the shoreline, put yourself in the driver's seat this weekend. He wanted to hear that. We'll do that tomorrow, Andy. There we go. Good afternoon. Keep watching as Andy will bring it your way, bud. And Brad, last year we had the testing session on Friday. I did not get here till Saturday morning at 21. I don't think they had the testing session on Friday here at 21, I believe. But I do like this. It, it, it takes the edge off. Yeah, it does. And first of all, good news. The next boat up is the U40. You'll oh, remember good. Dustin Eccles turned a lap at 160 and then went down here and we saw smoke and were concerned and so forth. Well, the boat is back out on the water. If memory serves me right, Jeff, well, I know you're correct. Last year was the first time that we went to the two-day event. And even though it was the Gold Cup, Katie and her team here went to the two-day event, but they decided to open up the course for testing two to five. That was last year, 2022. And it worked well. They've done it again. And actually, I like this. I think this is good. I do, too. Before I saw the entire weekend schedule, what I saw was qualifying at 8 a.m. Saturday morning. I go, whoa, 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 how do you do that without testing? For and then I saw what they were doing on Friday. And this is, I like this. I think this is good. It's uh, certainly nice and relaxed for you and me. We're sitting here just watching and talking race boats. I'm enjoying it immensely. Hope our viewers and listeners are as well. Season opener for H1 Unlimited right here in Northeast Alabama at Lake Guntersville. And Brad, here's the Tennessee Orange with a little black and silver. It's Dustin Eccles and Bucket List Racing. Dustin will do double duty this weekend. Also, too, in the Grand Prix with the Miss Renee working into turn number one. And Brad, we mentioned earlier, this is a boat that's capable. This is the one that could sneak up and surprise. Yeah, it certainly can. And this is the first real opportunity for Dustin Eccles to drive an unlimited. Yes, he drove the 440 for many years, but we know that's got the smaller engine and it just doesn't have the speed and capabilities of these, these particular craft. He did get the opportunity to drive the boat down at San Diego, and it was interesting talking with Dustin at the test session. He said it was almost cruel. He said, I got to taste it. I got to really taste it. One heat of competition, then they had the propeller issue, and he was done. And he said, God, I had to wait all winter to get this opportunity. He's excited about this. He's a good young kid. Also, too, we mentioned Jamie Nielsen earlier driving Grand Prix for the late Scott Pierce. Dustin Eccles drove for Scott Pierce as well in Grand Prix. And now Brad, as you say, pulls his foot in turn number one, but that's a nice lap. Ooh, I was thinking he wasn't running quite that hard. 165, 165.782. Kelly said, all right, that works, pull your foot, bring it home. So we've had four boats, 165 and over. Wow. The eight, nine, one, and 40. 
Well, or just three boats. I'm I, sorry. The eight, nine, and forty have been over one sixty. Eight, nine, miles. and forty over one sixty-five. Correct. Ninety-one top lap looks like one sixty-three seven. Top lap on the one at one sixty-three two. But you like to talk about triple deckers. I have a saying that I like to use, which kind of relates to the same thing. When they come off that corner together and you can throw a blanket across all four of them, when they're running that close together, whoo, you can throw a blanket across them. And it's going to be extra large as well. You need yes. a big blanket here it on this course to is. cover them. But I think this is going to be an exciting season opener for H1 Unlimited. But Brad, better yet, exciting for these fans here in Alabama. Of course, there's a big influx of fans coming down from Madison, Indiana, to watch this season opener. But we're getting a new fan base right here at Lake Countryville. We saw lots of interest last night with our fans. We were separated, but during our walkthroughs, talking to the teams, boy, there was a lot of, lot of interesting questions being asked by the fans and the drivers and the crews were very acceptive to answer their questions. And uh, these are the venues we need, I feel, Brad, going forward into the sport. We're here at Lake Guntersville, a community of what, about 15, 20,000? Gotta be other place in, in the United States this size to host an event. Absolutely, and you don't have to drive very far outside of Guntersville before you're in the next town, then the next town, then the next town. There's a lot of people in the greater area here. I, I should, this is your third year? Yes. You and I together here, so it's probably not fair that I would ask you the same question that a individual said to me last night. Uh, he came and he asked, he said, what's, what's the biggest change you've seen since that first year in Guntersville? And I said, well, I guess the obvious change is there's more people. They are growing their fan base here, and they are bringing in new fans. So that's expanding, and that is all very, very positive. But you got close and touched on what my real answer was, and I want your opinion on this. What I've noticed from 2018 to this year is the knowledge of the fan base here. These folks know what's going on. They sure do. They're going on H1.com. They're reading about the boats, yeah. the drivers. They're following on YouTube. They're watching on Facebook and social media. They know what's going on. And on our race calls, we can tell in the back of the crowd noise, the enthusiasm, starting to get a good build of hydroplane fans Absolutely. back here in the it's not new to the area. It was big in the 60s, unlimited racing, inboard racing, some in the 70s and 80s. It took a break in the 90s, double O in the teens, but but the late teens it came back. My apologies, but it's back, and uh, people here love it. We're seeing a lot of interest from the local fan base. And, Brad, you touched on I've been seeing it as well in the social media factor. been it's, a lot of people uh, from down here in this part of the country comment on the H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Racing. At the 2017 H1 Unlimited Awards Banquet, it was held in Kennewick, Washington, at the Red Lion Hotel. And... A young lady came up to me and introduced herself. Her name was Katie Norton. I had actually met her before. But anyway, we at, before the night was over, we brought her up on stage and just introduced her to people. And she said, y'all have been giving out these awards for the best race site and all that stuff. We're going to be on the circuit next year, and we're going to start winning those awards. How right she was. <laughs> that woman is amazing. They've won plenty of awards. You hear the noise in the background, and it's the 79 Reliable Diamond 2. Bad influence, boat owned by Mike Webster out of Webster, Massachusetts. Jeff Bernard in the cockpit out of Kent, Washington. This is our Grand Prix America hydroplane class in testing. Craft length at 24 feet, 12 foot width. 68 cubic inch supercharged engine is the power plant big block automotive engine hauls weigh around 2700 pounds they generate 1400 horsepower they'll run the one and one quarter mile course here at lake guntersville these boats in a straightaway are capable of doing 
Speed speeds of up to 170 miles per hour, but I think here at Lake Guntersville with these short shoots, with the different twist in the course this year with the larger turns, I think at the end of each shoot we'll be seeing up to 140 miles per hour. Jeff Bernard, a quick loop around the track in the GP79 Reliable Diamond Tool. He'll return to the pit dock in the dominant orange checkered flag effect boat is your two-time defending National High Point Champion in Grand Prix America. Another boat coming back out, and that is But they're off course and tough to tell from our angle here without the uh, monitor we'll have tomorrow. Grand Prix America boat will go back in to the pit area, it appears. No, now I think they're recircling, Mike, and I believe they've refound the race course. And once they get closer to us, we'll give you an ID who is on the water here in testing.
beautiful racing venue here at Lake Guntersville for the Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest, but such a unique situation as our unlimited and Grand Prix America pit area are so far away. Brad Luce rejoins us, and Brad, I think, I think I need that monitor tomorrow. On the back shoot, I'm having problems. <laughs> Well, but with it, that sun, it, it's really, it's really right shining into our eyes right now. We have the use of the canopy here, but it is tough to pick them up from our vantage point here at the start finish line. And Dustin Eccles back out on the water, and Richards Racing's Miss Renee, the former Shockwave boat, campaigned by the Bridgman family. Dustin Eccles pilots out of Monroe, Washington. Dustin out earlier today in the GP17, Miss Renee, second opportunity in the Grand Prix America Crab. Mile and a quarter course. Working nicely through turn number two. As we mentioned throughout our broadcast this afternoon, redesigned courses here at Guntersville. The one and one quarter mile course has been perfectly earlier they claim it's the south's fastest water <laughs> i think it's the world's fastest water for hydroplane racing it's about to be that well this evening when we're done here i have some work to do over in the pit area but then i also have a meeting tonight with katie norton i just might bring that up there you go might have to explain to her her slogan's no good and I already bought a shirt last night. It's the South's fastest water. Oh, I like that new design they've got on them. It's great. That. I'm going to get one, too. Did I tell you the new shirt I got this morning? For real, I need to borrow that Sharpie and correct that on that shirt. You What'd did? you get? I got, a, I got the best shirt ever. <laughs> What'd you get? I got a shirt that says the Piggly Wiggly, oh. Guntersville, Alabama. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Back to GP activity on the water here. River City printing. Brandon Kenny out of Newark, Delaware. Out on the water. This is a brand new boat. Some experimental touches, designs to this GP35 River City printing. Brandon Kennedy, I mentioned out of Newark, Delaware, the driver. Driving for TKO Racing 35, the families of Thompson Kennedy. Singa represent ownership of the GP35 to take to the water. Tana, thank you for that information. Your husband, Mike, thank you for your information. I'm the sandwich between the Morissettes 
And with that, I'll take a slight break. We'll come back with you. We got one half hour left of testing here at Lake Guntersville. Welcome. Thank you for watching the broadcast. Planes back out in the water here at the Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest as we're closing in on 27 minutes left in this testing session. We'll go up until 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Pro Light boats this year presented by Go Lithium. Three on the water. These crafts 20 foot in length, 10 foot width. All powered by a stock 350 cubic inch engine. 400 horsepower is what the they generate. Racing trim at 1,500 pounds. Shoot speeds here at Lake Guntersville. I think we'll see about 110 to 115 at the end of each shoot here on this mile and a quarter course cut out here in northeast Alabama. Good to see the Geronimo back out on the race course. That is the oldest hull in pro life this weekend. Kyle Johnson, the rookie chauffeur out of Jackson, Georgia, is the driver driving for Jay Brennan out of Lake Capacong, New Jersey. 
I met Kyle Johnson this morning. He just went through the APBA Inboard Driving School three weeks ago up at Springfield, Ohio. Got his teeth cut in the sport at the driving school. And now he's here this weekend to begin his inboard hydroplane racing competition here at the Guntersville Lake Hydrofest. If you're a fan out there watching on H1 Unlimited through YouTube, if you're interested in the APBA inboard driving school, go to www.apba.org, search through, find the driving school info, and you could possibly go to school and get a chance to drive an inboard hydroplane next season when class gets back in session at Springfield, Ohio. So Kyle Johnson goes down the big course. Looks like he'll go back to the pit area in the Geronimo. That is Dylan Goodell out on the race course in the E-Rat Racing. Dylan out of Allen Park, Michigan, just west of the Detroit area. Local sponsors helping E-Rat Racing this weekend are Aflac and Art of Nature. Still have that wind condition here this afternoon. Our flag right below us here extending out nicely, but water conditions have been ideal for testing today for H1 Unlimited, Grand Prix America, and Pro Light. We'll get back into activity tomorrow morning early at 8 a.m. Central Daylight Time here in Guntersville, Alabama for H1 Unlimited Hydroplane Qualifying. That will be a two-hour window from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then after that, we'll start getting into our racing activity here in Northeast Alabama. to give an update on the U3 Griggs Presents Miss Ace Hardware. Got some information from crew member Kirk Duncan, driver Jimmy King out of Wales, Michigan. Heard something in the enclosed capsule of the Terminator. He brought it back in under its own power. They've run checks on that turbocharged Allison and good news reporting that everything is okay with the Turbinator. Griggs presents Miss Ace Hardware. No word on if they'll elect to go back out on the water in this testing session on this Friday here at Lake Guntersville. But good news for fans of the Turbinator with the World War II turbocharged Allison aircraft engine. Looks like Jimmy King and Ed Cooper and that team, they'll be set to go qualifying tomorrow, as we've mentioned numerous times today, tomorrow morning from eight to 10. Central Daylight Time here in Guntersville, Alabama. <laughs> Seen some great testing speed so far today from H1 Unlimited. One speed particular of Corey Peabody in the U9 Beacon Plumbing, a test lap of 168.199 miles per hour. Second quick so far in testing, J. Michael Kelly, the teammate boat of Peabody, the U8 Beacon Electric at 166.066 miles per hour. Third quickest on the ladder, and it was a phenomenal lap of Dustin Eccles in the U40 Bucket List Racing at 165.782 miles per hour. Andrew Tate put in a top lap for the U91 Miss Goodman Real Estate at 163.713 miles per hour. Jamie Nielsen, a good lap in the U11 Legend Yacht Transport, 162.466 miles per hour. Those are our five unlimited boats 
going over the 160 mile per hour barrier in testing. Other speeds posted today in testing. Oh, I'm sorry, we got six of them over 160. Top lap for Dylan Runney in the U1 Miss Home Street at 163.294 miles per hour. Brent Hall attempting to becoming a qualified driver in H1 Unlimited. Had a top lap in the U40 Botano Homes at 142.238 miles per hour. Jimmy King did record a lap, but it was the warm-up lap in the U3 Griggs Presents Miss Ace Hardware at 118.683 miles per hour. Our pro light testing has subsided. We'll take a break here on the microphone. We have the water until 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Thank you for watching at H1 Unlimited through YouTube. We'll be right back.
for Jamie Nielsen in the Legend Yacht Transport. We mentioned Scott and Shannon Rainey, the boat owners, are out of Clee Ellum, Washington, east of Seattle, up in the mountains. Primary sponsor, Legend Yacht Transport, based out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Of course, this boat is powered by the Lycoming T55L7 gas turbine, pops out 2,600 horsepower. And last season, this boat had a good season. They were very consistent, finished fourth in the H1 Unlimited National High Point standings. Nielsen gonna be a little bit slower this time, working through turn number two. We will go ahead and deliver a time to see how much it did decrease, but so far, day number one in Guntersville has been a success for the Unlimited Racing Group's U11 Legend Yacht Transport. Nielsen by the start finish line buoy. Tana Morissette monitoring the radios of H1 Unlimited when she writes the time down. We'll deliver it to you, the race fan, watching on H1 Unlimited through YouTube. And now Jamie turns to the left. He has slowed the chartreuse in royal blue. Legend Yacht Transport, he will go back to the pit area. This team going back with the original two-wing T-plus boat built back in 1993, but over three decades. This is a phenomenal boat with many changes, a lot of parts and pieces off that original build, and 93 is gone by the wayside. Hull was actually completely rebuilt in 2009, then again in 2017, but they've done a ton of work to this one over the winter, and it has showed not only in hull performance, but engine performance, and propeller performance, and he did lift heavily there on the fourth lap at 118.463 miles per hour. What's up next, my friend? Is any boats in the water? Do you know? Get out that little marker and tell me. Trying to get a GPN. So with that, Old rackety windy here from Rikers Ridge. I'll take a little bit of break, but don't go away. We're here with you until 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Back out on the water, Grand Prix America hydroplane testing here at the Guntersville Lake Hydrofest. Day number one of three of activity, and we're approximately 11 minutes away from closing the course here on day number one. Our class is represented here this weekend with the fastest racing boats in the world, H1 Unlimited, the second largest class in the world, Grand Prix America hydroplanes, and the Pro Light series presented by Go Lithium. Saw Greg Hop out here earlier in the GP15 Stetner Construction Group. They also get assistance throughout the season from Bardall and Plan B Garage, but they would like to thank Guntersville Foodland Plus 
They were on display yesterday at Guthersville Food Land Plus as uh, that local grocer helping the hop team there this weekend while they stay at Lake Guntersville. Greg Hop been involved in inboard hydroplane racing also too and unlimited racing for a number of decades now. He resides from Lake Stevens, Washington. His father, co-owner of the boat, Jerry Hop, out of Snohomish, Washington. This particular craft won the season finale curtain closer for the 2021 San Diego race in the GP15. It's an older hull built back in the 90s that gained its fame when it ran as the Alamo for driver Bo Scheid with previous owner Ned Allen. But the composite boats of today, you take care of them. Yeah, you're going to take some old parts out. You're going to put some new ones in. But it says vintage like 1995, but it's more of a sportier model. It's still good. So Greg made a quick tour around the course in the Stettner Construction Group. That will be their local sponsor for the Tri-Cities Washington race coming up the final weekend of July. And now we will go back to some pro light activity presented by Go Lithium. With that, I'll take another break. We're coming ever closer to 5 o'clock here Central Time. That's when the course will close. Keep watching. More action ahead at H1 Unlimited via YouTube. From our officials here at the start finish line, this appears to be the final boat that will take to the waters of Lake Guntersville here at the Guntersville Lake Hydro Fest. It will be Bobby King out of Shelby Township, Michigan driving for Roger Mahan in the LDC construction. This was the boat here last year in the final heat. Pardon me, that lost by 10 feet to Dylan Runney, who was piloting the Pleasure Seekers. That particular craft this weekend will be driven by rookie John Woldarski. And Bobby King was well on his way to victory here last year, but right at the last moment, Runney came up on the outside and passed King and won by 10 feet. King traveled to Madison, Indiana next weekend for the Indiana Governor's Cup and actually won in this craft and pro light competition with the local sponsor, Diego's Mexican Grill. Diego's will be back on board this boat next weekend at the Madison Regatta presented by U.S. Premier Two Mills. Mayhan Motorsports, Roger Mayhan, the engine builder for this craft. Lots of power. Worked under this boat over the winter. Bobby King was busy up in Michigan doing some hull modifications, some patches here and there and repairs. And uh, this is one of the top ones in the Pro Light Series presented by Go Lithium. 
course, we saw King out here earlier today in the Grand Prix America Hydroplane Series. He'll be driving for Mike Mavinsky and Huey Newport this weekend. The GP88 Jack's Bar and Grill presents Sunbelt Rentals Hyper Wings Hydrofish. Back into turn number one. Good day here weather-wise in Gunnersville. We had remarkable weather last night for the inaugural street party. We had temperatures here in northeast Alabama at the end of June. It was in the mid-70s, a slight breeze. It was a pleasant evening, but as the evening did go on, it did get a little humid. It's been a little humid here today, but not like we saw last year, but that could reappear here on Sunday watching local television this morning with the meteorologist forecast. It could be in the low 90s with some humid conditions here on Sunday, but it's been pleasant here today with testing here at the Guntersville Lake Hydrofest. Bobby King returning to the pit dock in the LDC construction. As we're getting close to wrapping up the day here with H1 Unlimited via YouTube, but with that, we're gonna give the final speeds, the top speeds for H1 Unlimited. We'll give you the top five. Top testing time so far today, Corey Peabody in U9 Beacon Plumbing at 168.199 miles per hour. Second quick, his teammate, J. Michael Kelly, in the U8 Beacon Electric at 166.066 miles per hour. Third quick in testing will be Dustin Eccles in the Bucket List Racing at 165.782 miles per hour. Fourth quick in testing was Andrew Tate in the Miss Goodman Real Estate at 163.713 miles per hour. And fifth quick today was Dylan Runney in the U1 Miss Home Street at 163.294 miles per hour. We don't want to forget the U11 Legend Yacht Transport had a time of over 162 miles per hour. Brent Hall did have a lap at over 142 in the Boitano Homes. Jimmy King did record a lap in the Turbinator at a little over 118. Brad Luce, you're back with us. Good news on the Turbinator. I know you've been doing other media duties. He felt, heard something, pulled his foot like you said, came back in, they did the checks, understand everything's okay, the Turbinator's ready for qualifying there we tomorrow. Go. Here's That's for the Southern Cup. For the Southern Cup, Jeff, I apologize. I did have to step away. I had some other things going on and it was good. We, uh, we love media coverage and we had some good media coverage over there and now I'm gonna, he's gonna head on over to the pit area and we're gonna get some TV coverage. I said I'd point out some drivers to him and it was, it was a very, good good discussion and this was a very good day on the water well brad is always better yet seeing you but when we do this it's just uh, such a pleasure you're the best in the business you wear so many hats in this sport and conducting the local media activity they chose the right person wrap this thing up i need a cold one I think I do too, but I think I got some more work to do. I got to get over to the pit area, but this has been day one of, well, we're going to call it day one of day three or day one of three, but it was kind of only a half a day. We just had a three hour test session, but it was very, very good. There was a lot of action. And as you were just talking about the speeds there and the numbers, there was a lot, and I mean a lot of laps north of 160 miles an hour. I think the stage is set, Jeff Ayler. I think we're gonna see one of the fastest races that maybe we, you and I have ever seen, and we've seen a lot of them. But I think we have the potential here to see one of the best and one of the fastest races we've ever seen. This is gonna pull the curtain on our first day of coverage on the H1 Unlimited live stream. This is Brad Luce for Jeff Ayler. I'm gonna say so long. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Central Daylight Time. We'll put the boats on the water for our qualifying. 
Jeff Ayler. Have a good evening. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Let's be ready to go. Until then, this is Brad Luce and Jeff Ayler saying so long from Guntersville, Alabama.